this moment to introduce our brothers who are debating over a topic that strikes the interest of everybody that is here. A topic that is entitled The Bible, Truth or Altered by the White Man.
from the third eye and third ear speaking through. His voice is penetrating, firm, and at times raspy and always musical. His language ranges from highly articulate to the street corner gusty. <laughs> is forceful, militant, powerful, noble. His sense of humor can have audiences bouncing in their seats with laughter, yet his ability to paint the seriousness and pain of the black experience in America can bring tears to the eyes of the classes of his work.
In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, praise belongs to Allah. I bear witness that regardless to land or label or language, there is but one God. We thank Almighty God Allah for coming as it was written and prophesied that he would come seeking that which was lost. And we can find no other people fitting the description of the lost brother, the lost sister, the lost sheep, except we, the 50 million or more mentally dead black men and women here in the hills of North America. We thank Almighty God Allah for his Messiah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and that one who is anointed and appointed for this hour for the liberation and salvation of the black nation. I speak of none other than the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. I greet you. Assalamualaikum. I am most honored to have this opportunity to debate this topic. The Bible, truth or altered by the white man. We are taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that of all our studies, is best qualified to award our research. That if we know what happened yesterday, we can intelligently discuss today because today is built on yesterday and tomorrow is built on today. And if we know what went down yesterday, we're not likely to let the same thing go down today. We believe, we believe that the Holy Bible, are you listening to me? We believe that the Holy Bible was the divine inspired word of Almighty God. But we believe that this cold-blooded cracker, we believe that the white man has taken the Bible and altered God's word. And so we will prove here tonight, we will prove here tonight beyond any shadow of doubt that the Bible cannot just come from the manuscripts that the white man has in Germany and England and throughout Europe, but that we must go back and read the hieroglyphics and the Medunatar on the walls of ancient Egypt and ancient Africa. <laughs> the Old Testament was written some 2,000 years before the invention of printing. It was written in Hebrew, a language composed entirely, brothers and sisters, of consonants, with any points or marks indicating or standing for vowels, without any. There were only consonants, no vowels. Imagine writing a sentence or a paragraph with just consonants in the sentence and no vowels whatsoever, which means you've got to figure out what the sentence is talking about when you take out A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y and W, but it wasn't sometimes, it was all the time. <laughs> Pastor Chuck Cynical Singleton will try to convince you that the Bible is the inspired word of God and that it has not been altered by the white man. Now that might work in Disney World, but not in the real world. Not in the real world. <laughs> you have to take that step back to Disney World. We got to take that step back to Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. But it won't work here tonight, Pastor Singleton. <laughs> the books comprising the Old Testament were not divided into chapters or verses. And no system of punctuation was known. Furthermore, there was no dictionary of the Hebrew language. And thus the accurate meaning of the words could not be preserved. The Old Testament was printed for the first time in 1488, and until this date it existed only in manuscript, and thus constantly exposed to erasures and additions. It is omitted by the most learned, it is admitted by the most learned men in Hebrew language that the present English version of the Old Testament contains at least 100,000 errors. The Old Testament contains at least, Pastor Singleton, at least 
100,000 errors. And the New Testament, recent scholars and theologians just met and determined that over 80% of the New Testament that is attributed to Jesus Christ, that Jesus, the black revolutionary Messiah, never said a word of it, brothers and sisters. The Bible tells us, it tells us on the first page that it is translated out of the original tongue, that it has been diligently compared and revised into the standard and authorized King James Version, QA Version, Phillips Version, this Cracker's Version, another Cracker's Version, and the other Cracker's Version. We don't get a damn about no version. We want to know the spirit of the Lord. Let's stay at the Lord. Here we go. I say to you that after we have been robbed of a knowledge of self, robbed of our names, our language, our religion, our culture, our God, our folk ways, our morals, and our norms, and robbed of the very power of our own being, by the white man, if a man won't treat you right, what makes you think he'll turn around and treat you right? When we came to America, we didn't read English, Pastor Singleton. When we came to America, we didn't read English, we didn't write English. And so the white man robbed us of a knowledge of self. You saw Roots, you saw Kunta Kinte, you saw Fibla, you saw Fanta. He robbed us of a knowledge of self. He told us about a God in the sky, in the sweet by and by, after you die. But he didn't tell us about nothing sound on the ground while we're still around. He gave us a devil under the ground, some fellow with some red pantyhose and a pitchfork that was supposed to stick us and jug us in an eternal fire. I'm here tonight to tell you that the devil is a white man and he's on top of the ground. He's not under the ground. You bring us your devil from under the ground and we'll bring you our devil from on top of the ground. We'll turn Bush loose on your devil. We'll turn Quail and Swatch Cough and the boys are loose on them. So brothers and sisters, the scripture teaches us from the original text, when we look at both Bible and Quran, in the early stages, the Quran was tampered with. The Jews sent out manuscripts among the Muslims to confuse the Muslims after the, the transition of Prophet Muhammad. And so today, both books are in need of proper interpretation. Today, both books require a spiritual and a divine guide to take you through the books. Now, Pastor Singleton will attempt to prove to you from what he has received from the white man. He's one of the students of a white man named Josh McDowell and another cracker named John Gilchrist and another cracker bigger than those two crackers. Here's a black man before you that follows a white man down in South Africa. Here we are, a black man who believes in following a white man. But he wears his chente tonight. Who cannot count on the manuscripts? The manuscripts are too confusing. Let's look at some of the contradictions and see if Pastor Singleton can keep up with the dazzling speed. <laughs> he's smiling, he feels that he's all set and ready that he knows the contradictions I'm coming with. But when you got over 100,000 of them to work with, you can start anywhere. <laughs> Which Bible is the inspired word of God? Which one? If we look at it carefully in raising that question, we will find, brothers and sisters, that there are some books uh, called the Bible that have 66 books in it. Some have 72 books in it. Some Bibles have what you call the Apocrypha. Some have what you call the hidden books of the Bible. Some call the lost books of the Bible. I've got Schofield, Dewey, King James, the Catholic version, New World Translation. I even got a Bible up here called a nigger Bible. Got all kinds of Bibles up here. 
The book of Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. Daniel 12 and 4 says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words of the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the end of time. This book is sealed till the end of time. Pastor Chuck Singleton, Chuck here, Chuck couldn't have gotten it from the white man who taught him. The real Chuck. Amos, the eighth chapter, the eleventh and the twelfth verse. Say, Behold, the days come and say the Lord that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine for bread, nor a famine for thirst for water, but for our hearing the words of God. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the west. They shall run to and fro, and seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. It goes on to let us know that there would be a church on every corner. Everybody would be claiming that they got the word of God. But Daniel says the book would be sealed up, and Amos said there would be a famine in the land. That's why prostitution is on every corner. That's why crack and drugs are in the community. But the problem is not with the crack. The problem is with the crack all brothers and sisters. That's who the problem is with. You got Church of God in Christ. You got Church of God over Christ. You got Church of God around Christ. You got Church of God through Christ. You got Church of God, no Christ. You got Church, no God, no Christ. You got just... Holy Roller and foot washer. We're everything. This kind of Muslim, Shia Muslim, Sunni Muslim, Ahmadiyya Muslim, Nation of Islam Muslim. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion, but the author of peace. I'm here to contend that both the Bible and the Holy Quran must be properly interpreted, and that both Christianity and Islam have failed the people miserably. That's why God had to send us somebody today. Second John 7, 9, 10, and 11, for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed, for he that biddeth him God speed is the partaker of his evil deeds. Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none under the name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Here I want to point out that what Pastor Singleton does not know, what the white folks did not teach him was that there is but one God that the physics law teaches us that all energy is constant. It just changes form. The physics law teaches us that matter is neither created nor is it destroyed. You don't have to have one name for God, Pastor Singleton. I hear that in your Sunday services you bash the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You say that we are not with you. I remember in the scripture when John and the disciples came running to Jesus, telling Jesus about those that they saw outside of that circle who were outside performing miracles in his name. And they said, we stopped them from performing miracles in your name because they were not with us. And Jesus told them, don't stop them from performing miracles. If they're not against us, they're on our side. If they're not against us, we're, they're with us. We're with you, Pastor Singleton. Why do you bash us from your pulpit? Why do you always criticize the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, there is but one God. In one part of Africa, they call him Ukulu Kulu. In another part of Africa, they call him Naku Paul. Another part of the world, they call him Ungalingo. Another part of the world, they call him Oshun, Ogun, Ilegba, Obatula. Oshun, we also know him as Shango. 
in another part of the world. We know him as Yim and Yah. We know him as Aset. We know him as Patar. I'm in Aten. I'm in Ra. We know him in another part of the world as God Almighty. Elohim. Yahweh. Yahweh Elaha. And in another part of the world we know him as Allah. But when we say Allah, when we say Allah, Pastor Singleton, when we say Allah, we mean Yemen Yah. When we say Allah, we mean Obatullah. When we say Allah, we mean Oshun Logun. When we say Allah, we mean Okun Kunu. Because Allah means all in all. It pulls all of the names together under one unifying name. All right. You cannot say Pastor Singleton, and I will prove to you here tonight that we don't have to call him Jesus all the time. In one part of the world, they talk about the same Messiah. There are over 16 Messiahs listed around the world and Redeemers, all born of a virgin, all called the Son of God. All of them are way crucified, resurrected, and exalted from the dead. You can go to China and find a Jesus under another name. You can go to Japan and find a Jesus under another name. You can go to Mexico and South America and find Koso Koto, Jesus under another name. And everything about the Jesus that we believe in parallels with him. You can go to India and find Buddha, and you will find that Buddha born of an immaculate conception. Born every point for point, straight down the line. Over 16 of them all over the world. You will find them under different names, but they represent one God and one Jesus. So don't be so narrow, Pastor. Loosen up. If you don't understand black language, if you just can only adhere to a white voice, Jay Wells, shut, chill. Don't be so hard, guy. Lord, loosen up, man. There's only one God. People in different parts of the world, shut, Jay Wells, guy. Different parts of the world, they worship him under different names. But he's the one God. He's the one Messiah. The only difference is that we believe that he's a black man with black nappy hair. That's the only difference. The Ten Commandments, we can find them written on the walls of ancient Egypt or Kemet in the hieroglyphics of the Medunetra. The 42 declarations of innocence of Maya. Maya, truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, order, balance, and reciprocity. We can find the creation story in the holy city of Abydos, written on the walls of the sacred temple of Sechuan, long before there was a Bible, long before there was a holy Quran. It all goes back to the black man and the black woman. You're the father and mother of it all. We will prove to you here tonight beyond the shadow of a doubt that we are believers in the Holy Bible. We are believers in the sacred scripture and the sacred inspired word of God. But we believe that the Bible has now been altered and pitfalls and snares have been added to it. Let's look at some of those contradictions that I mentioned. Let's go to the New Testament first. Matthew, the 27th chapter of Pastor Chuck, first through the 8th verse, Judas returned the 30 pieces of silver, saying, I have sinned, and that I have betrayed the innocent blood of Jesus. Judas threw the money down in the temple and went out and hung himself. The chief priest took the money and bought the field called the field of blood. That's Matthew 27, 1 through 8. But Acts 1, 15, 18, and 19 says, Men and brethren, the scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was the one who led them to Jesus to take him. Is that the end of ten minutes? Now this man, Judas, purchased a field. Now the first scripture, Matthew 27, tells us that Judas went in and threw the money down, and then ran out and hung himself. 
and said he didn't want to have nothing to do with the money. And now Acts, the first chapter, the 15th verse, says that Judas took the money and went out and bought a field with the money. And then it goes on to say that he jumped off a cliff and bust his guts out. Now, did he hang himself or did he bust his guts out? Did he throw the money down or did he go buy a field with the money? Come on, Chuck. Come on, Chuck. Jim was, Chuck. Second Samuel and Ten. Second Samuel and Ten. Come on, Chuck. Second Samuel and Ten. First Chronicles and Nineteen. And the Syrians fled before Israel. And David slew the men of seven hundred chariots of the Syrians and forty thousand horsemen and smote Shabbat, the captain of the host, who died there. Now it says here that there were seven hundred chariots of the Syrians, forty thousand horsemen. You with me? First Chronicles 19 and 18. Said, but the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew of the Syrians seven thousand men, which fought in chariots, and forty thousand footmen, and killed Shabbat, the captain of the host. My question, Chuck, is was it seven hundred chariots or was it seven thousand chariots? Were they horsemen or were they footmen? Were they, were they riding or were they walking? Are you going to shut your mouth here tonight or are you going to keep on talking? That's my question. chapter 4 and 26, and Solomon had 4,000 stars for horses and chariots, and 12,000 horsemen whom he bestowed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. It says here that he had 4,000 stars for horsemen. First Kings chapter 4 and 26 said that Solomon had 40,000 stars. Question is, did he have 4,000 or did he have 40,000? How does the man, how does the inspired word of God that is still pure make a mistake like that between 707,000 between 4,000 and 40,000. Let's go a little deeper than that. That's not deep enough. Jehoiah King, 2 Chronicles 36 and 9, 2 Kings 24 and 8. Jehoiah King, the promoted king of Jerusalem, was eight years old when he began to reign in Jerusalem. But 2 Kings 24 and 8 says that Jehoiah King, the promoted king of Jerusalem, was 18 years old when he began to reign in Jerusalem. Was he eight years old or was he 18 years old? Second Chronicles 22 and 2. Second Kings 8 and 26. The 40 and 2 years old was Azariah when he began to rule. Second Kings 8 and 26 says 2 and 20 years old was Azariah when he began to rule. Was he 42 years old or was he 26 years old? We need to know, Pastor. God is seen and heard. And I listen to me carefully. And I, because the battle here tonight is for the minds and hearts of our people. That's what the battle is for. <laughs> and I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts. Exodus 33 and 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. How did he speak to him? As a man speaking unto his friend, Exodus 33 and 11. And the Lord said unto Adam, and Adam said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Genesis 3, 9 and 10. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Genesis 32 and 30. But now let's go on. The scriptures also say you never saw God at any time and live. But all of these scriptures say they saw him. They walked with him. They heard him. And let's see what the Bible says. No man in 18. We just said that Moses saw him. How? I want you to answer that, Pastor. I want you to answer each and every one of them. Let's go on. Ye have never heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. John 5 and 37. But we have just been told that they, Genesis 32 and 30 that they did hear his voice and sin. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for no man shall see my face and live. Exodus 33 and 20. We just said that Moses saw him how? Come on, there's a hundred thousand of these contradictions in the Bible. And when I come back for my rebuttal, I will give you the scholars. I will give you the seminarians. I will give you the theologians. I will give you the theological schools and schools of divinity. I will give you what you need, brothers and sisters, to understand that we don't have to be against the Bible today. We just need a guide to guide us through the book today. It has been tampered with by the white man. The man will treat you right. What makes you think he'll turn around and teach you right? 
Second Timothy, second Timothy two, 2, 15 and 16 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, right of truth. Rightly divided, as Paul says, endeavor to prove all things and hold fast to that which you find to be true. It says when a people, Genesis 15 and 13, who would be in bondage for 400 years, in a strange land among a strange people. We are that people fulfilling the prophecy. But Pastor Chuck Singleton cannot teach them because he will hate the white folks in his church. So he can't teach them that you are the chosen people of God. He can't teach them that Jesus is a black man with nappy hair. He might try to pull out a black Jesus here tonight, but that ain't the way it is with Chuck all the time. Brothers and sisters, I have proven to you beyond any shadow of a doubt that there are contradictions in the Bible. I have only given you just a few, one, two, five, or six, or ten. I'm sure that Pastor Singleton cannot meet these arguments head on. I have proven to you that we cannot depend on the manuscripts that are left in the hands of crackers and devils in Europe, but we must go beyond the manuscripts all the way back to the hieroglyphics of the Medu Neter, because none of the original manuscripts match each other. All of them contradict each other. Then they came up with the Dead Sea Scrolls. That threw a monkey wrench in it. Now the Jews, the so-called Jews, claim that they have come up with some new scripts. Uh, some new manuscripts, and they are reluctant to release them. I wonder why won't they release them. <laughs> Pastor Singleton, brothers and sisters, we cannot continue to depend on the white man to teach us. We must begin to reach out to God's divine man in our midst. And I'm here to tell you that the scripture says whenever the people would be in this condition, that God would send them a messenger. He would send them a divine warner. It says he would send them. I'm here to tell you that that is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister, Lord Holocaust. These are the ones to guide us through the pitfalls and the snares of all of these books. All of these books. When this debate is over, I want to reward Pastor, I want to reward Pastor Singleton, not with a black Bible, but give him a white Bible before he leaves here tonight. Don't try to fool the people of God. We have never attacked Pastor Singleton. We respect Pastor Singleton. We will law unity with Pastor Singleton. But to use your pulpit to try to pull the people of God in the pit with you, we can't accept it, Pastor Singleton. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. A white Bible for Pastor Singleton. How much time? How much time? Two minutes. We got two more minutes here to cook with the good pastor, Chuck Singleton. Brothers and sisters, I have proven to you that there is but one God, and he's called by different names in different lands. What's wrong with that? Am I so narrow-minded that I've got to have him called by the, lang out of the name of the language that I speak and only that name? That's foolish. There are over five billion people on the planet Earth. The scripture said every eye will see him, every tongue will confess, and every knee will bow down. But they will all speak in their own language. They will speak in their own tongue, giving praise and honor and glory to the almighty God. You're all the same man, because all energy is constant. It just changes form. Even Paul told us in depth that we should take on, the scripture teaches us, that we should take on the same mind. Let this same mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>
Pastor Charles Chuck Singleton. Projector that's going to be demonstrating something on a screen, so if you'll be patient with us. Now, let me just uh, say I appreciate the symbolism of the red, white, and blue on my side of the table <laughs> and the others. I want to say to you that I'm debating Dr. Khalid Muhammad. And I would appreciate it if you'd show some of your Muslim respect as I do that. Now, I want to point out to you, as you prepare this screen, I want to point out to you that I'm here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only wise God. I make no apologies for that. I will say that uh, it's funny though that Mike didn't work. That's on the floor. I got a red, white, and blue. And I, a couple other things I want to point out and then I'll get into my argument. And that is, number one, this. Number one, this. That uh, I didn't know Yale and Harvard and Columbia were black schools. Back in the I, I, that, did they change them all of a sudden? I had no idea. And I want to say also, I want to tell you also that every author that you will hear me quote tonight is black. I especially prepared that only to hear Dr. Muhammad quote the 16 crucified saviors, which is written by a white man, E. Budge, E. Wallace Budge. I, I prepared thinking that for sure you wanted to deal with black authors and you quoted from white folks. I can not understand that. Now please, please just a moment. Let me say to you, let me say to you how a jumbo Watu Wazo, be a beautiful people. If you will uh, go ahead and put the things on the stage, please, on the, uh, what I intend to do, and I want to say to you as I try to demonstrate some things about the Bible, and about the Quran and the message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I want to point out some things to you. Yeah, we're together, all right? Now, I, don't, I didn't come here to make fun of your religion, and that's not my intention. So, uh, Doc, I can't, I can't speak if they don't be quiet. Let, why don't you let him answer what I'm going to say, all right? Thank you. All right. Now, I guess I should come down on the floor because I can't really do what I want to do from up here. I want to point out to you, first of all, all of you brothers and sisters, black, white, I want to tell you something. 
And you got to understand this and get it straight, get it straight the first time. If the black Muslims of Los Angeles have a problem in Los Angeles, I will be the first to join you in responding to that problem. I'm here because I love you. And I want you to know I love you. But it is a great fallacy, number one, to say or to think that I learned what I got from white folks when the fact of the matter is I didn't. I have for here you a, uh, for you here a bibliography that will demonstrate to you that I have not gotten my information from white folks. Dr. Muhammad got his from Harvard, Yale. Mine came from Gerard Wilmore. Mine came from Chancellor Williams. Mine came from W.B. Du Bois. These are black men, in case you didn't know that. I want to tell you first that you ought to understand that the Bible is not a European book. The New Testament is not a European book. Of all the writers of the New Testament, only one is from Europe, that's Luke. The rest of them are not European. It is a mistake to think that the truth of the Bible comes from white folks. The fact of the matter is that when you look at the Bible, you look at Genesis chapter 10, for example, you will see that God spoke, and when he did, he spoke to Cush, the first. And if you don't know a Cushite, a Cushite is a black man. The first son of Noah that's mentioned is Ham. And you all understand something about Ham. The word Ham means black. It does not mean white. It does not mean white man. It does not mean European. God gave his first son, Ham, and when Ham came in, there were several sons under him that he had, Canaan and Cush and Shem and other sons. These sons had a particular purpose and a particular job. There were two groups of Cushites. One was in Africa and the other was in Mesopotamia, what we know today as Iraq. If you read the writings of Cheikh Anto Diops, who was a black man, he says blacks were spread from the Nile down to Mesopotamia during the times of the Bible. If you read the book of Zephaniah, the first chapter, verse 1, you will see the Bible says that Zephaniah, the son of Cushi. Cushi is a black man. Zephaniah was a son of a black man, which I think in everybody's nomenclature makes him also black. Doesn't it, Dr. Muhammad? Now, Further, in the Bible, in the New Testament, the first person saved outside of the Jews was in the book of Acts, chapter 8, when the Ethiopian eunuch. In fact, interestingly enough, there were three people that came to Christ beginning in the book of Acts, chapter 8. The first one, the Ethiopian eunuch, the second a man by the name of Cornelius, and then a third man who was a merchant. The first one that gave his life to Christ was the Ethiopian eunuch. Now, when people come back, he was black, by the way, Ethiopian, that's over there in Africa? Y'all understand? Now what Dr. Muhammad and many others in the nation of Islam are preaching while they tell us to be quiet in our churches. What they are teaching is that blacks came over here as Islamics, as Muslims, and that they were forced into Christianity. The fact is that is, that could not be further from the truth. And I will demonstrate that to you. Number one, the man I just mentioned in Acts chapter 8, get your Bible and read it, he was black. He went back to Ethiopia, and when he went back, he found that the Ethiopian Coptic Church. If you go to Ethiopia now, you will see the Ethiopian Coptic Church. I have a copy of their Bible on the stage right now. He didn't need a white European missionary. He got saved by himself. Furthermore, Furthermore, when he went back and began to minister, he had been reading the book of Isaiah, you see in Acts 13, another who got saved. In case you didn't know it, the first, one of the first popes in the church, in the early church, was African. In fact, of the first seven popes, three of them were black. Did you know that? Well, you talk about the white man's Christianity. Did you know that we have a history early in the Christian church? In fact, our history is so strong have you ever heard of St. Augustine or Augustine? Did you know he was black? If he walked through the streets of America right now, they'd call him a light-skinned black man. He was black. 
While y'all talk about the white man's Christianity, you giving it away, buddy. This is the best thing going, and you want to give it to the white man. In 386 A.D., St. Augustine, who was probably black, did his ministry. 496 A.D., the third African pope, St. Gilgelasius, who was also black, then in the fourth century, Africa sent the first missionaries in mass to Europe. They went to the Ireland. They were telling Irish folks about Jesus Christ. That was in the fourth century. I might point out that was before Muhammad was born. Nine church fathers in the early church in the first two centuries. Two of them, Origen, Tertullian, and Clement, three of them were black. Three out of the nine early church fathers were black. 287 AD, a black African legion that left Rome to go into Africa, their job, now again, I want to point out this was in 287. Muhammad was born in the 600s. All right, in 287, a black Roman legion went down into Africa. They were stationed there as a part of the Roman Empire. Their job was to take care of some business in Africa. While they were there, unbelievers, the general and the whole army were witnessed to, were told about Jesus Christ by black Africans. This is 287 AD. The general, whose name was Maurice, gave his life to Jesus Christ, and his whole battalion of soldiers gave their lives to Jesus Christ. They then went back on a call to Rome. Rome then sent them to Gaul, to Switzerland. When they went to Switzerland in 287 AD, they were commissioned to destroy the Gauls who rebelled against Rome. When they got there, they found these Swiss people who were Christians too. They refused to kill their Christian brothers in Switzerland. There was a whole black battalion. They refused to do it. Rome said, you will kill them or we'll kill you. They said, we will not do it. They believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in Jesus Christ. We won't kill another legion to try to make those black Africans kill them. They would not do it. They took one out of ten of those black soldiers and killed them. They thought that would make them do it. They still would not do it. You know the end result? The end result very simply was this, that that whole battalion of black Roman legionnaires were killed in Switzerland. So that even right now today, if you go to Switzerland, you will find a monument to St. Maurice and the special designation to St. Maurice. He is the patron saint of Krakow, Poland. White folks look up to this black man. He was the special patron saint also in Switzerland. So don't tell me about this Islam coming along later, brother. We knew Jesus before Muhammad was even born. You think you brought all Islam folks over here? No. In 1540, one of the black Africans, you think they're all ignorant dummies, don't you? That's what you think. Let me tell you something. In 1540, one of the Africans brought from Africa to America was discovered. After he began to explain and they understood his language, this African slave had already been converted to Christianity and was preparing to be ordained as a minister. They found that in 1540, you want to see it? A black author wrote it, his name is G.E. Simpson, Recent Political Developments in Race Relations, written in 1961, page 209. Read it for yourself. He further says that in the Negro church, the Negro church was probably the first protest organization under slavery. And many Negro ministers today, I'm reading what he said in those days, now it's 1951. He said, many of the Negro ministers in that day took their texts from sections of the Bible which favor equality and fraternity. Further, C. Eric Lincoln, who also wrote a book about the black Muslims in America, wrote, black protests and black leadership are something more than a selection of a text or sermon topic. Black religious leaders, listen folks, from Nat Turner to Martin Luther King have left their Bibles in the pulpit and laid their lives on the line in the streets. You don't know that these people were Christians? You think Harriet Tubman was following Muhammad? 
Do you think that these people of Vesey were following him? These were Christians. Nat Turner stood up with his Bible in his hand. Harriet Tubman with a Bible that led her. These Christians, they weren't some dumb slaves. These slaves knew Jesus, and they stood up and marched through the streets. They said, let my people go. I ask you, Dr. Muhammad, have you never heard of David Walker? Have you never heard of Gabriel Presser? Have you never heard of Sojourner Truth? Have you never heard of Matt Turner? Have you never heard of Harriet Tubman? Have you never heard of Martin Luther King Jr.? These folks were Christians. They stood up, not in a Islam. They were Christians, and they stood up for the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what you say, you can't wipe it away. It's history. It's written, my brother. Let me move fast here. How much time do I got up there? Now. All right, let me show you something else. Now, the Bible they believe in. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on it, because I, I thought I was going to have a scholarly debate. I didn't know I had to preach today. Now, now I want to tell you this. For those of you who tuned into this for the, for the jokes, let me suggest you turn on HBO Comedy Hour. All right? The jokes are funnier than his. And the comedians are closer to the truth. Here's the facts. Here's the facts, my brother. You take and make some, co co some corrections and make some comparison. This man told me there's 100,000 errors. He ain't showed me one yet. Not one. Not one. 100,000, and then he beat around the bush, walked around the stage, and finally came back and tried to prove one. One place where the man said he had in his stables, another place he said in his war, those are two different things. I'm not going to get into that right now. I'll deal with that later. But I will tell you this. Now you take a look at it. I will tell you this. What you need to understand is this, that of the manuscripts of antiquity, now you listen to me closely, we have right now, not in white folks' hands, but in Ethiopia and in what was Nubia right now, 24,000 manuscripts dating back to the first century, to 90, to 132, to 122 B.C., or A.D. Now, what's the point? The point is this. King James didn't come along in 1611. At our church, I don't know what other churches y'all been to, but at our church, I take careful time to break down the tenses of the Greek and the Hebrew and Aramaic. We don't go with King James by himself. We want the Word of God. We want the Word of God. Now, for you to think that everything in the Bible, don't let Dr. Muhammad or anybody else fool you, the Bible is not based on King James. We've got manuscripts. We've got them back to 132. The Dead Sea Scrolls that he quoted disprove everything he said. The whole point of the Dead Sea Scrolls is we found references. In fact, Tertullian, again, a black man, Tertullian, in the 132 B.C., quoted from 11 of the 27 books of the New Testament. And the quotes he gave were exactly the same as the quotes you read right now if you read your Bible. That's 132 B.C. Uh, A.D. Let me show you something else, though, the Quran. I'm going to give you some more of the Bible. Remember, I want to show you something else about uh, the two books that you believe in. Notice this about the Quran. It's hard to see it. Can you focus that, Michael? Uh, let me say, someone asked me to learn how to spell it. Uh, if you check your Quran, you check my Quran, like he's talking about the Bible, there's all kinds of different spellings. <laughs> now, just want to show you a couple things about it, real quickly. Number one, the Quran, and he didn't bother explaining this to you, but there's 114 surahs, or surats, whatever you want to call them, all right? in the Quran. Now, it's interesting you know that. Did you know this also? Did you know that the Quran, uh, written back in 650s AD, says several things. It was a return of monotheism. I won't get into all the detail. I think I have that there. Hellfire is back. Heaven is real. Notice this. It tells you how to handle your slaves in the Quran. There it is right there. 
Quran, you read it. You know what it's called, Surah. Read Surah 2, verse 22. Read Surah 4, verse 25. Read Surah 4, verse 92, so you can know how to handle your slaves. All right? Now, let me go a little further. All you women that are, that are speaking real loud and white, God bless you. I like the way you dress, but let me tell you something, ladies. You may, you may beat your wife, according to Surah. That's right. It's in your Quran. Read it for yourself. Number 4, verse 34. It's in there. You read it. Go home and read it. Let me give you another one. You may marry two, three, or four wives. And if you want to, you can add a slave wife. I'm not done yet. Let me show you another one. Uh, you may take a slave man's wife from him. You read it. It's right there. That's Surah 4, verse 24. I read it. Have you? Let me go on. Give me the message to the black man. My time's going up. Not only that, let me give you the message to the black man. You want to see what it says? You say you know already. Let me show you a couple things it says. It was written by the, uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. All right? The last prophet of God is Elijah Muhammad, just like Eli Muhammad was the last prophet. All right? Number one, he says there is no trinity. That's on page one. All right? Number two, he says one God. But uh, then he says there's uh, 20, every 25,000 years, uh, 24, no, you read it. There's a page number. Every, every, you read it for yourself. Every 25,000 years, 24 black scientists get together, am I right? All right, and here's the page number right there. And when the 24 black scientists get together, then they pick one of their scientists to be God. That's what it says. That's what it says. On page 108, all right? Now, be quiet. I'm going to finish this in just a second. Now, not only that, but number three, the black race gave birth to a god named Yaku, capital G, God. That's on page 110. This god only lived 150 years. Now, let me figure this out for you real quickly. I want to volunteer. Stand up and be God over here, brother. All right? This is God. There's only one god. His name is Allah. All right? However, however, the black race gives birth to another god. His name is Yakub. All right? Someone stand up and be Yakub. Would you stand up and be Yakub over there? Would you stand up? Who? Come on. Come and get somebody to be Yakub. Here we go. Here's Yakub. So now we only got one god, but... Oh, wait a minute. He only lived 150 years, so we got to take care of that, all right? He died after 150 years. Now, not only that, but then... But then every 25,000 years, in order to get another Bible, another Quran, we have 24 black scientists that come together, and we pick one of them to be God. So we got another guy. All right, you come back up now. He's God again. All right, now let's keep going here. Y'all want it? Here it is. Straight out. I want you to explain it, Dr. Muhammad. You help me understand how you can have all these gods, and there's only one God, and his name is Yah. All right, let's go on. Now, wait a minute. Let me show you something else. Let me show you this. Let me, this is in your book. I read your, have you read your book? I read your book. Let me show you something else. Let me show you this now. All right, you can sit down, God. Let me show you this. The black race, the black, blacks are descendants of an Asian black nation or a tribe of Shabazz. In that book, holy folks, in your book, Message to the Black Man, it says Africa is East Asia. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got, we got South Chicago, we got North Dallas, South Central LA, East St. Louis, and the one thing that's ours, Africa, y'all want to call it East Asia. And then you want to call this a black thing. You want to give away the biggest continent, second biggest continent on the earth, biggest the moon itself. And you're going to call it East Asia. It's Africa, brother. Well, they don't speak Arab. They speak Wolof. They speak Swahili. They speak the languages of the African. I'm almost done. Is my time up? Uh-huh. Now, let me explain something else to you. Look at this. The black race created the heavens and the earth, and then they also created themselves. That's on page 42. Uh, I'm going to skip Orthodox Islam, let's bow to black Islam. Our kinky hair came from a dissatisfied scientist 50,000 years ago. That's on page 31, all right? God opposes the integration of races, all right? 
It's far more important to teach separation of blacks and whites in America than prayer. That's on page 204. The world's time was out in 1914. The white race are all devils. The white race was created 60,000 years ago. Here's my other page. All right, now let me show you something else. Look at this. How about this? Whites attempted to become black again, but when they tried, they became gorillas. Come on, come on. All right, let me go on. Now, for all the preachers, all you preachers that are closing up to these brothers in the name of black unity, let me tell you what they say about Christianity. They say Christianity is a religion of deception organized and backed by devils. Jesus was incorrect in the Bible. And you won't tell me I'm on your case? You think I'm wrong for telling you you're wrong when you're telling me this? That my religion and what I believe is from the devil himself? Let me go on, brother. All right, God has no spirit. The spook God of Christianity demands death and redemption. Heaven and hell are not places but conditions. How about this one? Look at this. Look at this one. Back in the book of Genesis, Moses used dynamite with a fuse to kill 300 of his followers. All right? Mountains were created by bombs being dropped from a plane that's circling the earth and been circling it for years. All right? Now, listen to this. Elijah Muhammad says the Bible is two-thirds prophecy. And then he says the prophecies are a small percentage of the Bible. Two-thirds is a small, okay, all right. There's a planet in the sky circling the earth, one half mile square, built by humans, which can be seen twice a week. There's this plane up there. Now listen to this, all of y'all that that's right, listen to this. He said the years 1965 and 1966 are going to be faithful for America, bringing the fall of America. Page 270. Did America fall in 1965? Did he? All right. Not only that, but then he says America's worst calamities ever would have come in 1966 and 1967. That's on page 48. Did it happen? All right. Armageddon, it says, will be a war between Islam and Christianity. Christians do not believe in God as being a human being. Yet they believe he is the father of all human beings. Listen to this, all the black preachers that are, that are saying I'm with you. Black preachers' mouths are controlled by devils. The greatest hindrance to the truth of our people is the preacher. And you look at that, my brother, and you tell me that it's all right. I want to tell you something. You haven't read the book. You read the book and you see for yourself what it does say. I'm going to close my last two minutes. I'm going to tell you this. I'll make it plain, I'll make it simple. The fact is, our roots are in Africa. Our roots are in the church. We were Christians long before Islam came into being. We love the Lord Jesus. When my folk folks, when my slave folks, when my people took off their shoes and walked through the dusty fields of Louisiana to get to church and then put on their shoes and could sing, you got shoes and I got shoes and all of God's too. Don't you tell me that they didn't have something real. Don't you tell me that it was just something forced on them. It wasn't forced on them. They loved the Lord and it gave them strength to do what they are. Don't you give me that Islam stuff, brother.
Now we have 15 minutes of rebuttal, starting with Pastor Chuck Singleton. I am finding it really interesting that things keep changing, but we'll go along as we see it. That's all right, we'll go on. Let me, uh, let me say to you that I think one of the important points to make in this part of my presentation is very simple. Uh, I believe and you believe that God is real and that's the starting ground for us. I have maintained and I think I demonstrated that you don't seem to be too sure about who God is, but that's another subject. I think what we need to do, though, is also ask some questions about who we are. You all are the nation of Islam, but I want to ask a question. I have said to you, and I think I've proven, and my bibliography is available to anybody here, unlike Dr. Muhammad's. He has not given you a bibliography on the books. He quoted a book, didn't tell you what the book was, what page it was on. I told you page number book. You can go to the library tonight and look it up. I want to say to you further that one of the very important things to note is this. Why were blacks in slavery to start with? And without the use of the overhead, I'm going to simply explain it to you. The fact is that black slavery in Europe began in 1440 with the Portuguese. In fact, the record, again, by a black historian, Chancellor Williams, indicates that the Portuguese began black slave trade under a man whose name was Gomez Inez de Azuara. Between 1440 and 1448, 900 African slaves were taken to Portugal as slaves. What year was that again? 1400. Now, the fact of the matter is that slavery of black people, you, our people, had begun a thousand years before. And it was the Arabs who first brought blacks into slavery. Arab slavery started 1,000 years before European slavery. Slavery was a part of the fruit of the conquest, according to Islam. We came into American slavery because we had no national or diplomatic protection. Why did we not have national or diplomatic protection? The strongest nation in Africa in the early starts of Christianity, that is, the first century, the time the Bible was being written, the New Testament at least, Nubia was a black African land. Egypt was a black African land. In fact, the word Egypt is a Greek word for Egypt, but Kemet is the really the name, the black name for Africa. Now, you need to understand something. That while the Arabs began to take these blacks in slavery, here's how it started. In Nubia, the church was strong from the beginning. The center of the Christian church was not Rome. Rome became the center of the church because southern Africa, where Christianity was strong, was cut off from Europe. They were one church at first, until Islam began to rise. And Islam, when it began to rise, was that the bell already? Oh, okay. I don't, yeah. All right. Uh, but when Islam began to rise, they began to fight, uh, particularly in the church of Nubia. Here's what happened. Three main cities in Nubia. Most of the Muslims, when they moved in, the Arabs, were in the outskirts, rather. I said Muslims, I correct myself. They were not Muslims, they were Arabs. They were in the outskirts of Nubia's main towns. When a big fight began in Nubia's capital between the uh, clergymen and the kings, 
They soon moved in and the Arabs took over Nubia. That's why it became Egypt. Until that time, it was black and it was Christian. It was a strong Christian stronghold. Now, it was so strong until it took the Arabs from the time they started in 400 until 1317 to wipe out the Christian as they thought they had. The fact is, in the Bush country, there were still many who were practicing Christians. The 1374, there was a feast held in the Church of Jesus Christ in Nubia, in the main city, to celebrate the Arab conquest of Nubia and their attempt at wiping out the Christian church. The Arabs destroyed black civilization. Not only is that a fact, a black author, Chancellor Williams, who Dr. Muhammad will not quote from, because Chancellor Williams makes it plain in his book, The Destruction of Black Civilization, that it did not take place in 1400, or else the Europeans never would have come in and took us from Nubia or from Kemite. If they had come in while Nubia was strong, they would have been rebuffed. Nobody's going to come into America and take George Bush out of the White House. And folks would not, they, I agree, they should. But the fact is, they, they can't do it. And you agree they should, but you can't do it either. Now, why? Simple reason. The reason why they can't is because they had diplomatic protection around George Bush. Our people lost their diplomatic protection, they lost their civilization, they lost their nationhood because of the movement of the Arabs from the 5th century until the 13th century uh, after Christ. Now, in 1275 AD, and I'm going to give you a page number on that since you moved your hand, put page 42, The Destruction of Black Civilization, Chancellor Williams. You can get that, I'll give you a bibliography in just a moment. It's not only that book, but a series of other books. In fact, if you have one of these sheets, I have the book right there. I told you, I give you my books, bibliography, everything. Ask him to do that. All right, there's everything right there. Uh, Gerard Wilmore tells you, Kane Hope Felder tells you, James Henry Breasted, J.H. Dunbar, W.B. Du Bois, Arnold Heron, uh, Chancellor Williams, George James, Chica Anadote, William Leo Hansberry, all of them black will tell you that the destruction of Africa as a civilization took place underneath the Arabs. Now, I'm going to tell you that it's not so much important that they did because uh, Dr. Muhammad has said that the Arabs uh, were just as bad as the Europeans, and he's correct. But you need to understand, first of all, folks, that white people are newcomers to Christianity. You need to know that. It started in Africa. It was in Africa. You know the biggest slave rebellion that ever took place? The greatest slave rebellion that ever took place, like Operation Desert Storm, took place in Iraq before Muhammad was born. The Arabs, or rather right after Muhammad was born, I beg your pardon, the Arabs took slaves from the land we call Nubia, took 150,000 of them into Iraq. Them Negroes wouldn't stand for it. The brother said, no way. The brother said, you are not going to hold us in slave. And they took control of Iraq in 868 or 863. And for 15 years, these black folks ran Iraq. Check it out, it's called the Zanz Rebellion, Z-A-N-D-G. It's in your history book if you look for it. Blacks ran it. Blacks ran, blacks ran Iraq. Blacks ran Iraq because they took Iraq from the Arabs who had taken them from their civilization. Now, black slaves continued to be imported into Morocco into well into the 20th century. Timbuktu, and the idea of the road to Timbuktu, was an was a idea that started because black slaves were taken from Timbuktu and taken into the Arab countries. An Arab man by the name of Saidi Ahmad Yumasa was a, a man who had fairs called Baka to sell my people, Africans. This took place in the 8th century. When you read other writings, you see in the history book called Islam in Ethiopia, we can see that Islamization and growth in the slave trade went hand in hand. Geneva Convention, listen to this. In 925, September 25 of 1926, the nation signed a pledge to bring about progressively and as soon as possible the complete abolition of slavery. In 1926, every nation there signed except Saudi Arabia and Yemen, both Arab countries. East Africans were being sold into slavery long after the American emancipation. 
Now listen to this. I want to show you. I'm going to skip over some of this to show you this. We talk about a white man and indeed he did some evil things to our people. But let me tell you something else. England abolished slavery in 1843. France, 1848. The Dutch in 1854. America in 1863. Russia in 1873. But the Arabs, without exception, except for Iran, I should say, which started in 1882, continued their slave trade. Egypt didn't abolish slave trade under the Arabs until 1923. Afghanistan, 1931. Iraq, 1924. Persia and Jordan, 1929. Muslim Northern Nigeria in 1936, Yemen in 1934, Kuwait in 1938, and I want to tell you something, folks. I talked to the Anti-Slavery Society just this week, three times. They tell me, you can call them white, brother, but if you don't like their word, go to Mauritania and you'll see black folks are still in slaves under Arabs. If that ain't good enough, let me give you the phone number. You can call them, or I'll help you buy a plane ticket. You go to Mauritania, you'll see our black brothers underneath Arabs in slavery right now in Mauritania. No, you don't believe it. It's easy. Now go, go. But let me tell you something else, folks. Listen to this. From a black man. This is from Kwaku Person Land. He said it on KPFK Radio during the African Middle Liberation Weekend, not too long ago. He said this. He said, today, right now, there are Islamic countries that still have black African slaves. Even now, today. What's amazing about that, my brother, is this. What's amazing about that, and the reason why I bring it to your attention, is because now, you folks got rid of your slave name. The most popular name in the Arab countries is Muhammad. The most popular name in English-speaking countries is John. So I think it'd be right to assume that most of the slave traders were named John in America or in England or in English-speaking countries. I think it's also proper to assume that the most popular slave name in the Arab countries is Muhammad. I ask a simple question. Did you trade one slave name for another slave name? The fact is, my brother, the fact is, my friends, I don't say this to make you feel bad. I say it to you to make you get right. The point of the matter is this. You tell me that this nation of Islam is a black thing and Christianity is of the devil. Let me ask you a question. Don't call this a black thing. It's not blackness. Why do you want to be Arabs? Why not take a name like Changamara? Why not take a name like Thumbutu? Why not take a name like Yuhuru? Why not take a name that's an African name? That's not a black African name. Those are Arab names. They're Arab names. You want to be Arabs. You want to be Arabs. Brother, I wear my kinta cloth because I'm black, and I'm proud to be black. I wear my kinta cloth because my folks are black. And they're proud to be black. You want to be an Arab. You want to be an Arab, not black. Now, I'm going to tell you something as I close. As I close, I don't often drink coffee. I don't often drink coffee. I don't drink it very often, but I'll tell you this. When I do drink coffee, don't fool me by mixing cream in with my coffee. Don't fool me by mixing cream in with it. When you serve me coffee, Make mine black. If it ain't gonna be black, don't tell me it's black. When you put cream in it, this is Arab. It's Arab. It's not black. If you're really black, then tell me your black name, Mr. Muhammad. If it's black enough, if it's black enough, then you will go back far enough to see your Christian roots, brother. It was Jesus Christ in Africa.
Now I understand. Now I understand. Turn it up a little bit. Turn it up. Turn it up. Now I understand why they say a mine is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this is not the real Chuck Singleton. I have stacks of tapes of Chuck Singleton, and Chuck Singleton only says one black word in church. You know what that is? Farrakhan. Anti-Farrakhan messages. Let's take a look at this. Chuck Singleton keeps talking about the Arabs. My son up here stands, son. My son up here, Kalfani, which means born of royal African parents destined to rule. Kalfani said, Dad, when you get up, ask him one question. I said, what is that, son? He said, ask him, son, and father, is the Bible truth or altered by the white man? He said, ask him that. Thank you. Chuck Singleton. Chuck Singleton chose this topic. But instead of speaking on the topic, he spent all of his trying time, time trying to impress you with his black history. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. On Sundays at Loveland, when the church has white folks there, Chuck is not so black. Chuck is not so black. I am here tonight to say, and I will prove to you, that the black man and the black woman is the original man and the original woman. I am here tonight to prove to you that the original Chinese is a black man and woman. The original Japanese is a black man and woman. That the original North American, South American, Central American, a black man and woman. I'm here tonight to prove to you that the original Hebrew is a black man and woman. And I'm here tonight to prove to you that the original Arab is a black man and woman. Revelation 3 and 9. Revelation 3 and 9 speaks of a people who would call themselves Jews, but who are not Jews, but are of the synagogue of Satan the devil. Chuck is still filing white folks. He quoted Dr. Chancellor Williams, but Dr. Chancellor Williams in the destruction of black civilization also tells you that Christianity is the white man's religion. Not the real Christianity, but the mixed up, fixed up Christianity. The mixed up, fixed up Christianity. Chancellor Williams does not embrace Christianity. Chancellor Williams does not embrace Islam. Chancellor Williams does not embrace Judaism. He attacks Islam, Christianity, and Judaism in the destruction of black civilization. Pastor Chuck here quoted St. Augustine. Let's see what St. Augustine really means. St. Augustine in Origin and Evolution of Religion, London, 1924, quoting him. St. Augustine says, what is now called the Christian religion has existed among the ancients for a long time and was not absent from the very beginning of the human race. He said they did not wait until Christ came into the flesh, from which time the true religion existed already much later before it was called Christian. St. Augustine tells us, St. Augustine tells us that long before it received the name Christian, the name Christian came up among the enemies of Jesus and the disciples at Antioch. They first called them Christians at Antioch. Jesus never called himself a Christian. Jesus never used the name Christian. You can only find Christian at Antioch when the enemies came and called them Christians. I have, by God's grace, been all over the world. I've been to Christian countries, so-called Christian countries. And wherever the black-white dynamic existed, 
I saw the black Christian on the bottom and the white Christian on top. I've been to Jew country, and wherever the black-white dynamic existed, I saw the white Jew on top and the black Jew on the bottom. I've been to communist countries, I've been to capitalist countries, I've been to socialist countries, and I found where the black-white dynamic existed, the black on the bottom and the white socialist communist on the top. I've been to Muslim countries, and wherever the black-white dynamic existed, I saw the white Muslim on top and the black Muslim on the bottom. All over the world. Somehow, Pastor Singleton lost a grasp for the subject, and he chose it. I gave Pastor Chuck over tw close to 20 uh, close to 20 things in the Bible that were direct contradictions. He didn't speak to not one of them. Did you hear him? He didn't answer not one of them in the Bible. And before I sit down, and before I sit down, I will give him 20 more, or I'll give him plenty more, and see if he will answer them. He sidesteps them, he ducks them. You already know the teaching from message to the black man. He didn't have to do that. I'm here tonight to tell you that the true Arab is a black man and that Dr. Chancellor Williams said we were driven from the centers of power of what is now called the Middle East. And those areas changed from black to brown to white. You are the true Arab. You are the true Jew before this Johnny come lately enslaving Jew and enslaving Arab. Brothers and sisters, the white man wants us to believe that Egypt is not even in Africa. We're looking at it. He said, gee, where's God? It's not there. It's in the Middle East. There is no Middle East. The Middle East is nothing but Northeast Africa, separated from the mainland of Africa by a man-made ditch called the Suez Canal. That's all it is. Don't tell me about this Johnny come lately, slave-making Arab. He's not the true Arab, not the true Jew. There is no Middle East. But the white man tells you, or the white man's preacher, Pastor Chuck Singleton, tells you about the Middle East. You ask him, Chuck, where's the Middle West? Where's the Middle North? Where's the Middle South? And if you want to go for that, Chuck, where's the Middle Middle, Chuck? There is no Middle East in area for the Arabs. We are the true people of that area. Let us go on a little further here. He said, I will have to admit, they were not Muslims, they were Arabs. That's true. We are taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, root knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Root knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Root knowledge. We are not taught branch knowledge, but root knowledge. And when you go to root knowledge, you will find out that the original man and the original woman, black man and woman, that we are the father and mother of music and art and science and civilization, mathematics and medicine. But we are at the root of Christianity. We are at the root of Islam. We are at the root of Judaism. All of them got their religion from us, their ethics and their morality from us all of the peoples of the earth. <laughs> Pastor Chuck has some problem with have our teaching on heaven and hell. Heaven and hell are states of mind, states of being, states of existence, and your heaven and your hell is right here on this earth. Ain't no heaven in the sky, and no devil under the ground. The planet Earth is 196,940,000 square miles. It's 57,255,000 square miles of water coming up out of 139,685,000 square miles of water on a planet that weighs 6 sextillion tons. Yay. And brothers and sisters, the planet Earth is spinning. Listen to me carefully. Can I get it quiet? Shh. Shh. The planet Earth is traveling at 1,037 and a third miles per hour. It makes a complete revolution on its own axis every 56 minutes, every, 20, uh, every 24 hours, 56 minutes and 46 seconds. It's spinning. 
You get down on your knees at 12 noon. You are sure that heaven is up and hell is down. But the planet is spinning and by 12 midnight, your heaven has now become hell and your hell has now become heaven. Heaven and hell are not up and down. Heaven and hell are states of mind, states of being, states of existence. And your heaven and your hell is right here on this earth. Is Inglewood in the house? Is Compton in the house? Is L.A. in the house? Is San Bernardino in the house? And if you ain't got no money anywhere around here, you broke as hell. If you ain't got nothing to eat, you're hungry as hell. If it's winter time and you ain't got no heat, you cold as hell. If it's summertime and you don't have no air, you hot as hell. If you think this crack is gonna stop lying to you, you crazy as hell. States of mind, states of being, they exist right here on this earth. Pastor Chuck wants us to believe that we're going to throw some wings on our back and go flying away up in the sky. Well, 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 we go fly away up in the unknown sky. And that every day in heaven is going to be Sunday. Go wear golden slippers and a long white robe and a starry crown. And we're going to eat milk and honey every day up in heaven. You better have a whole lot of holy toilets in heaven because milk and honey is a laxative. You talking about shouting all over God's heaven, you're going to be doing something else all over God's heaven. Christianity, I never said, was the white man's religion. Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, all of it, that's why I got them all right here. They all come from the black man and the black woman. Well, let's go back to some of them contradictions that Pastor Chuck here keeps ducking. Oh, here they are right here. God cannot lie. Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Hebrews 6 and 18, it was impossible for God to lie. God lies, the Bible says. Jeremiah 4 and 10, Oh, Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people. As we go on 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11, For this cause God shall send them strong lies and delusion that they should believe a lie. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. 1 Kings 22 and 23. And if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet and lied to him. Ezekiel 14 and 9. There, uh, let's take a few others. He, Chuck, Pastor Chuck is not going to answer any of these, but let me give him some more. He didn't answer the first one. He didn't answer not one contradiction. I contend here tonight that the Bible is in its original state, not in the manuscripts. You say you got so many thousand in Ethiopia. The question is, do you have them here tonight, Chuck? The question is, do you have them in Loveland, Chuck? That's the question. The question here is whether we can rely on those manuscripts or do we have to go back to Africa where they got the manuscripts from. I can't trust it after it's going through the white man's hands. God is to be found by those who seek him. Matthew 7 and 8. Everyone that asketh receive it, and he that seeketh find it. Those that seek me early shall find me. Proverbs 8 and 17. God is not to be found by those who seek him. Proverbs 1 and 28. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but shall not find me. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make any prayers, I will not hear you. Isaiah 1 and 15. God is peaceful, Romans 15 and 33, the God of peace. 1 Corinthians 14 and 33, God is not the author of confusion, but peace. God is warlike. The Lord is a man of war, Exodus 15 and 3. The Lord of hosts is his name, of peace, Isaiah 51 and 15. I've got 100,000 contradictions in the Old Testament alone, and over 80% of the New Testament are attributed to Jesus. Jesus didn't even say it. Is that a mark against Jesus? 
the black Messiah, the Lord, the Savior, the Master, and the Redeemer? No, brothers and sisters. That's a mark against the white man who has altered the Bible after it has been set up. Dr. Yusuf Ben Yakin and Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. George G. Jackson, Dr. Malefi Asante, Dr. Little Jeffries, Dr. Rosalind Jeffries, Dr. Maulana Karanga, Dr. LeGrand Clay, Dr. Tamari Bridges, Dr. Richard King, Dr. Naeem Akbar, Dr. Ivan Van Sotomer, Dr. Sheikh Anta Dia. Dr. Jay Carruthers, Professor Renoko Rashidi, Professor Loxley Gagan, uh, Professor James Small, uh, Professor uh, and Dr. Jacob Bubakari, Dr. George G.M. Jones, Dr. Chancellor Williams, Dr. Asa Hilliard, Dr. Kofer, Dr. Nathan Hare, Dr. Julia Hare, Professor Ashwa Crazy, Brother Jelani, Professor Simmons, Dr. Alton Maddox, Dr. Nasi, I mean, Professor Nasi Asiel Ben Israel, Professor Kimmett Kush. How much time? Is that the end? That's it. These are the black scholars. I gave you the white ones earlier so you would have it in black and white. debating you, sir, or these loud mouths back in? Let me, let me know. As soon as you all are done, I'll tell you the truth. Now let me say, first of all, in my closing, Minister Muhammad, the way you guys make excuses for yourselves, I think, I think if you ran over Ray Charles in a crosswalk, it'd be the blind man's fault. You're telling me that uh, that Arabic is not stolen, but the fact that Yes. First of all, let me say, I will try to answer that question. Let me give you an idea. I'll take two of the things. The first time he spoke, I was sitting back here. The reason why he and I both went out there is because we couldn't hear what the other person was saying. Well, the reason I went out is because I couldn't hear what you were saying. Now, so I will attempt to answer since I heard you in the second part of your presentation. Now, number one. I'll take two of the examples. I'm going to give you two of the examples, and I will take any others that you will give me right now. 
Well, then I'm done when you stand up. All right. The two examples I will use is this. You said that God said, seek me and you will find me. And then you said, God said, you shall seek me early and not find me. Dr. Muhammad, I would think that a man of your scholastic background under the white man <laughs> would have sense enough to know that when a text is taken out of context, it's just pretext. You have to understand that the Bible, when it says, seek me and find me, God is speaking to people that are looking for him and that he wants to find him. When he speaks and says, you shall seek me early and not find me, he's speaking to people that have sinned. If that don't make sense to your minds, then you've got something missing. Number two, number two, God says he never lies. In those quotes where you seem to imply that God was lying, he never said he lied. He said he sent a spirit of deception. That's not God lying. That's God allowing a lie. Now, if that don't make sense to you, then you still have a problem. And what amazes me even more is that here we are, all us black folks over here, the most, the most popular name in slave trade, Muhammad over there, John over here, Muhammad is over there kicking your brother's butt, and you over here getting your butt kicked by John, while you cry, Muhammad stole my name, I was the original Muhammad. It don't matter what you, be a man. Stand up and just be a man. And I want you to know something else. Let me take it one step further, brother. And everybody here, everybody here that doesn't want to receive this, let me tell you nonetheless, it don't matter what you say. I might, you're going to have to reach a whole lot higher to grab my dignity. I'm still who I am. I'm bonds. I'm proud. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost of God. And you can't take that away, brother. again, y'all want to be Arabs. That's what it is. You want to be Arabs. Now, let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this to you real quickly. I'm not saying that. All right. Now, Dr. Muhammad is telling us about blacks who we, we did, and we did come up with square roots, University of Timbuktu, Black folks first ones come up with that. But then a few minutes ago, he turned around and said, Abraham came out of Ur, and they didn't have any language. They didn't have it. They couldn't write. They had no nouns. One way or the other. Huh? All right. By the tape. By the tape. Dr. Muhammad said that they could not have had biblical tradition written down since they just started writing 2,000 years. Let me tell you something before that. Let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you something, sister. The fact is that in earth, in that time, children were taught in elementary school how to do square roots. They could write. They had mathematics. Algebra and the first geography came before the time of Abraham. You can't sit up here and tell me one hand that Abraham couldn't have written, and then on the other hand, how we did it thousands of years ago. It's got to be one way or the other. Now, now, Malcolm X, Malcolm X, from the autobiography of Malcolm X, as the minister of several temples conducting the Muslim ceremony, had occasionally fallen to my lot. As Mr. Muhammad taught me, I would start by reading over the casket of the departed brother or sister, a prayer to Allah. Next, I read a simple obituary record of his or her life. Then I usually read from Job two passages, in the seventh and fourteenth passages, where Job speaks of no life after death. Then another passage where David, when his son died, spoke also of no life after death. That's Malcolm X. Now listen to what he says next. He said, I have had probably a couple of hundred Muslims tell me that it was attending one of our funerals for a departed brother or sister that first turned him towards our religion. But I was to learn later 
that Mr. Muhammad's teaching about death and the Muslim funeral service were in drastic contradiction to what Islam taught in the East. Malcolm X said, Malcolm X said, Islam taught, Mr. Muhammad taught that there was no heaven in the sky. Mr. Ford taught and no hell was in the ground. Instead, both heaven and hell were conditions in which people live right here on this planet Earth. I discovered that this was not true, Malcolm X said. <laughs> further, further, Malcolm X says this on why he left the nation of Islam. Malcolm says, what I'm telling you is the truth. When I discovered who else wanted me dead, I'm telling you it nearly sent me to Bellevue. In my 12 years as a Muslim minister, I'd always talked so strongly on the moral issues that many Muslims accused me of being anti-woman. The very kill of my teachings and my most bone deep personal belief was that Elijah Muhammad in every aspect of his existence was a symbol of moral, mental, and spiritual reform among the American black people. For 12 years I had taught that within the entire nation of Islam, my own transformation was the best example. But then he says, then he says this. Yeah, you don't want to hear this. That's what it's all about. He says, after Elijah Muhammad was later accused as a very immoral man, I came to, I'm reading the book. I came to believe that it wasn't a divine chastisement upon Reginald, but the pain he felt when his own family totally rejected him for Elijah Muhammad, and this hurt made Reginald turn insanely upon Elijah Muhammad. Ju in July 3rd of 19, Elijah Muhammad, Associated Press, 67-year-old leader of the Black Muslim Movement, today faced paternity suits from two former secretaries who charged he had fathered their four children, both women in their 20s. Now, now, my context is very simple. The simple fact of the matter is this. Fact of the matter is this. Everybody needs faith. Everybody needs someone to believe in. You have chosen to believe in Elijah Muhammad. I want to present to you Jesus because you don't want to hear the rest. I'm telling you that Jesus Christ is the savior of the world, proven by 436 prophecies before he came. This man, nor any other man, will find fault with the Bible if he finds one thing wrong with the Bible in its original manuscript, then I will myself throw it out. King James is not my God. King James is not my preacher. King James is not my pastor. I follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ preaches to me. He is the one that came to the earth and took nails in his hands, nails in his feet. He shed his blood on the cross. He was taken down off that cross. He was laid in a rich man's tomb. When he was placed in that tomb, they had predicted that he would rise after three days. But I want you to know something, folks. Just like other men like Dr. Muhammad said that Jesus never rose from the dead, they said it could not have happened. More than 500 people saw him after the crucifixion. But they tried to explain that crucifixion. They said it wasn't real. He said it never took place. The Quran said he never died. But I want to tell you, my brother, they wrapped him in clothes. When those clothes dried, they weighed 115 pounds. When those clothes dried, weighing 115 pounds, they took a dead man and put him in a tomb. It weighed some two and two and a half tons, the stone that was rolled in front of that tomb. When that stone weighing two and a half tons was rolled in front of that tomb, Jesus Christ was guarded by 16 guards. They stood in any direction, six foot, they were trained to protect an area around themselves. Not one, but 16 of them were placed around the tomb of Jesus Christ. But on that third day, the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He got up from the dead. Let me explain to you, brother, if he was not God, if he were not God, if he were only a man, then you explain to me intellectually how in the world this man, laying in a cold, wet tomb, with two and a half stun stone rolled in front of the tomb, with 115 pounds of grave clothes wrapped around his body, 
then this man, listen to me, Muslim, this man, not God, wakes up, knocks off 115 pounds of grave clothes, pushes away a two and a half ton stone, beats up 16 guards, and walks away talking about, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The fact is, brother, it takes more faith to believe what you believe, that he's just a man, than it does to believe that he's God Almighty. There's no other way out of the tomb except the resurrection of an all-powerful God. Now I'm going to close. I'm going to close by telling you this. Two things. Number one, yes, I do have the Coptic edition of the Bible right here, my brother. You asked me, here it is. That's Ethiopian Coptic, Aramaic. You asked me if I had it. Secondly, let me show you and you can take and make your comparisons later on. In the Bible, and I wish I had a clear intellectual discussion with Mr. Muhammad. Because with, with, with he and me both preaching rather than discussing and debating, with all of y'all making the noise, we haven't been able to deal with the issues like we should have. But I want to quote this man. I want to quote this man. Right up here it says, up here it says, the Bible, true, or authored by the white man. Minister Muhammad says that I haven't dealt with that issue. But he himself said this, he said, I am here to prove to you that the original man is the black man. I'm not arguing that point, but that's not what we're here to prove. We're here to prove that either the Bible is right or the Bible is wrong. I'm telling you that you and your scholarly, lack of scholarship have been a disappointment in terms of dealing with this intellectually tonight because you haven't dealt with it intellectually. No matter what anybody says, no matter how loud your group yells, you haven't dealt with the issues of the Bible. It doesn't matter how many Bibles and what you call them, that is not the Bible. The fact is, this is God's Word. It is inspired by God. You say there is no heaven and there is no hell, you better hope not. Because if there is, my brother, you are going to go straight there unless you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the debate topic before us here tonight is the Bible. Truth or altered by the white man. I have given you conclusive proof. I have given you over 20, maybe even 30 contradictions in the Bible, just a few of the 100,000 contradictions in the Bible 
and Pastor Chuck Singleton only attempted to deal with one here tonight. What about the other 100,000? What about the 80% of the New Testament? Let me write a sentence very quickly on the board here. Jesus is Lord. is Lord. When the scripture that the pastor now quotes from and these manuscripts came out, remember as I started out and I proved to you conclusively that I will take you even deeper. There were no vowels used, only consonants. I only want to reason with you that if there are no vowels and only consonants, it's easy to make a mistake. Pastor Singleton did not speak Hebrew. <laughs> Pastor Singleton gave, presented us with the Coptic Bible, but he doesn't read the Coptic Bible. He doesn't read them hard. Pastor Singleton was asked to produce... <laughs> Pastor Singleton was asked to produce the original manuscripts. He didn't produce the original manuscripts. He brought us a book, the Coptic Bible. Let us go further. The scripture would say, or the page would say, J-S-S, S-L-L-R-D. Originally, we have found that the Greek and the Hebrew and the English, all of the manuscripts that he spoke of, that we cannot find among the manuscripts where even the manuscripts agree. But we cannot forget this, brothers and sisters. Some Bibles have 66 books in it. Some have 72 books. What about the books that were taken out of the Bible? What about the fact that the Catholic Bible has more books in it than any of the Bibles that Pastor Singleton talks about? If they have different books, and if they can't even agree among themselves about how many books should be in there and which ones are revealed of God, how in the hell can we say that it is not confusion, that it is an orderly process? I want to point out three other contradictions since Pastor Chuck Singleton spoke so much about the resurrection. Matthew 28 and 1, Mark 16 and 1, Luke 24 and 1, John 20 and 1. All four of the Gospels give different accounts of the resurrection. All four. Matthew 28 and 1 says Mary Magdalene and Mary went to the tomb and an angel came down from heaven and landed on a rock. But Mark 16 and 1 says that it was Mary Magdalene, or that it was Mary and Salome, a third person. And that one angel, after they went inside the sepulcher, was sitting inside. After Matthew 28 and 1 told us that the angel landed on the rock outside. Did the angel land on the rock outside, or did the angel end up sitting down on the inside? Was it Mary and Mary Magdalene, or was it Mary Magdalene, Mary and Salome? But it gets even more confusing. Luke 24 and 1 says it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary. What happened to Salome? What happened about 20, Matthew 28 and 1 that said it was just Mary Magdalene and Mary? They went inside the tomb and found two angels inside the tomb. What happened to the angel that landed on the rock? What happened to the one that was supposed to have been sitting down on the inside by himself? John 20 and 1, since he talked so much about the resurrection, John 20 and 1 said Mary went by herself. Mary Magdalene wasn't with her, Salome wasn't with her, Joanna wasn't with her. That she went by herself and didn't find no angel in the tomb and didn't find no Jesus. And then she went back to the disciples and told them, and then they came, Peter and John, the beloved one, running ahead of him, and they went inside the tomb. And when they got inside, then they left. And then when they left, they Mary found two angels after they left. Now, which one of these are we supposed to believe, Pastor Chuck Singleton? <laughs> Pastor Chuck Singleton told us about the Holy Quran and told us about things with the woman. 
The Bible as it has been tampered with by the white man, for all you women in the audience, sisters in the audience, it says that the original sin is placed on the woman. That you are the reason the world is under all this trouble today. That all sin starts with the weak woman, according to the white, not only racist, but the white sexist interpretation of the Bible. Bring these pictures out for me. I'm going to tell you. They give us in Christianity a picture of a last supper scene with 13 crackers sitting at the table. Why is the woman sitting at the table? No woman at the table. <laughs> Pastor Singleton is a deceptive man. Pastor Singleton never brings a black Jesus into the church. This is Pastor Singleton. This is Pastor Singleton, Jesus. This is Pastor Singleton, Jesus. This is Pastor Singleton, the angel. And this white man on the front of the book is Pastor Singleton's teacher, not Jesus Christ. This cracker on the picture is his teacher. And the Lord Pastor Singleton says that I quoted from 16 crucified saviors to let you know he doesn't know what he's talking about. He said that E. Wallace Badge wrote 16 crucified saviors. It was Casey Gray. If you made that mistake so blatantly, Pastor, how many others did you make? It's because Pastor Singleton has had a crash course in black just in 24 hours to come here and impress you. He does not teach that at his church. But I have to say, Pastor, I have to say, you didn't do too badly, Pastor. We'll have to give you an eye for incomplete. You got to come back and be taught again. <laughs> Pastor Singleton does not want to talk about the Council of Jamnia. Pastor Singleton does not want to talk about the Nicene Conference. Pastor Singleton does not want to talk about the conferences at Constantinople where they determine the sonship of Jesus, where they determine the Madonna Mary to be his mother and son said equal with God. He does not want to talk about the Trinity and which Nicene conferences where the whites added it. All you have to do is go back and study the minutes of the Council of Jamnia and the Nicene conference. That's where all of this started, Pastor. He said Malcolm discovered that there was a hereafter. How in the hell could Malcolm be alive and discover that there's a hereafter? He might know now, but he sure didn't know then. <laughs> he touched on the domestic life of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He touched on the domestic life of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. A man who took Malcolm X from being a drug dealer, a hardmonger, a pimp, a con man, a convict, and change Malcolm's reality, change Malcolm's life with a moral code and change all of our lives that are in here from the life that we came from. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan teach us that as we go into the Bible, Abraham, who is called the father of the righteous, Abraham, the father of the tribes, was married to Sarah, but Abraham went and took Hagar and had a baby for Hagar called Ishmael, and then went back to Sarah and had a baby called Isaac. David, who's called a man after God's own heart, saw Bathsheba over the balcony. She was married to Uriah, took Uriah, sent him to the heart of the battle, had Uriah killed, and then married Bathsheba. We can talk about Lot. We can talk about the many wives of Solomon. But the Bible does not condemn polygamy. If you want to justify polygamy in the Holy Quran, the Bible justifies polygamy also. Now, let's cover this thing about Asiatic. 196,940,000 square miles is called Asia before a white man named Afrikanus.
We didn't wait for some Johnny come lately crack a name after Kalus to name us. When we say Asiatic or that the whole earth was called Asia, we're not talking about a little continent, Pastor Singleton. We're talking about the whole globe, Pastor Singleton. Pastor Singleton. Pastor Singleton and brothers and sisters, you should ask the white man. He talks about Asia Minor. You should ask the cracker, what about Asia Major? I have proven to you beyond any shadow of doubt, and you cannot deny the undeniable and indisputable and irrefutable fact, proof, and logic that the Bible has been altered and has been tampered with by the white man. The white man has changed every book in existence on the face of the planet Earth. The white man is not a devil, but is the devil, and he does not leave anything alone that will give you guidance to book. We need a teacher today. We need a teacher today. But the Bible says, how can we get a teacher unless that teacher is sent to us today? I'm here to tell you that from Genesis 15, Deuteronomy 18, and from Malachi 4, 5, and 6, this people who would be in bondage for 400 years, and one like Moses who would come, who would teach separation, as Pastor Chuck Singleton said, he went saying, let my people go. He didn't integrate with the oppressor the way Pastor Singleton is trying to do. And he told us in Malachi that Elijah would come. Elijah would come. Now seven books have been taken out of the Bible between Malachi and Matthew. What do those seven books say about Elijah? I'm here tonight to tell you that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is God's man in our midst with the key to our liberation and our salvation. And no mystery God is going to get you out of this today, black man and black woman. Pastor Singleton, Pastor Singleton never spoke on the debate topic. Pastor Singleton came to impression that he's overnight black. But he said, you don't mix it. Bring his coffee hot, but you mixing it up, Pastor. Bring me a hot black cup. The strong, not mixed and not diluted and not tampered with. He never spoke to the contradiction. And I still have a whole desk full of contradictions. And I say to you that Pastor Chuck Singleton is another contradiction. Add him to the list of contradictions. We have destroyed Pastor Singleton's argument here tonight. Don't be fooled by the black Jesus. We now destroy his God. White Jesus, it is God here before you tonight. Oh, praise the truth to Allah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Allah, Assalamu alaikum. Now we begin the question and answer period. 30 minutes. 30 minutes of question and answers. I would like you to, you who have questions, to line up in a single file line. Be cordial, be respectful to one another as we go into the center aisles to approach the microphone.
A single file line. Let's be cordial and respectful to one another, please. Line up, sir. You want to line up, sir? Please, sir. Let's squeeze in here. So you want to line up, sir? No. What? No. from side to side. the questions uh, concise and brief as possible so that everyone would have an opportunity to direct their question to one of the debaters. You in the audience, my brothers and sisters, I'd appreciate it if you would be cordial and respectful, not only to the debaters here, but to the ones asking the questions. May we have it quiet so that everyone will be able to hear the question and hear the response. We'll start with our sister to the left, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, Reverend Singleton. Yes, sir. Um, Um, first of all, I would like to say, brother, we love you. You understand what I'm saying? We're on your side. Irregardless of the debate, we're on your side. It's just however way the misunderstanding is, hopefully Allah, or as you say, Jesus, will iron it out, and we all come together as one big family. Um, there's a couple of things that you have pulled out of the Quran and, um, that didn't agree with me. First of all was the beating of women. In the nation of Islam, as the black nation of Islam over here in the, the hills of North America, the brothers don't beat the sisters. We don't, we don't go for these. Okay, the second thing is, we've learned from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, in order for us to get respect, we have to respect ourselves. That's why we don't sit on the front pews of any church, synagogue, or even the, the mosque with our mini skirts on, thighs hanging out, trying to entice the reverend. Okay, we don't have our cleavage exposed. Now, is this a question or a, a I, sermon? I, I'm just yes, uh, I must interrupt. Let's just ask a question and refrain from making a statement, please, and speak directly into the mic, please. The first question I would like to ask, and the only question is, where in the Bible did Jesus say he was God? Where in, where in the Bible did he say he was God? First of all, you need to understand that it's throughout the scripture. It was prophesied. But if you read, uh, let me give you several examples. John chapter 8. Did you hear what I said, brother? I said John chapter 8. Now, if you're a respectful Muslim, Muslim means peace. So shut your mouth and be at peace. I'm talking, all right? Brothers and sisters, please. please. Brothers, I'm debating this brother, not you. Brothers and sisters, right. please let Pastor Singleton ask, answer the question, please. John chapter 8, first of all. Let me make this statement. What you must understand I'm about, 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 no, about, I'm, 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 I'm answering the question. No, no, I'm not answering the question. I'm answering, I'm answering, 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 answering the question. Yeah, you, they got right, it. Thank you. Do it, deal with him any way you want to. All right, I will. That's right. That's right. But I might add that while you are telling me about how orderly Muslim women are, are you all act, are these folks acting like good Muslims? Wait a minute. Well, every time I get ready to speak, that's what I was trying to tell you. Everybody in here is not a registered Muslim in the month. A lot of, a lot of brothers and sisters in here 
are not activists. They're from the community. Uh, fine, They're from fine. the community. That's what the brother was trying to say to you. All right, good enough. First one, John chapter 1. Now, John I'm going to start right there. John 1. She asked me where Jesus said he was God. You going to let me say it or not? Well, shut up. Okay. I know y'all got better home training than that. And Brothers and sisters, let's have at least three or four seconds to ask the questions and give them an opportunity to respond. Let's not stay on the mic long. Make no statements. Three to four minutes to ask a brief question and get a good answer. But the answer needs to be clarified also, sir, in order for the um, resurrection of the people. In order for what? So he said it was John 8, and I looked up John 8, and it didn't, it didn't say anywhere in John 8 that Jesus was Lord. And then he just said John 1, no, 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 and John no, no. 1 said... Now listen, I'm beginning. answering a question, sister. I'm answering, so let you be quiet man. while I answer. You already asked. All right, let, let, him, let him answer. All right, let's start with uh, John. I'm going to go a little further than John 8. I'll come back to that. John chapter 10. All right, let's go to John 8. Let's go to John 8. You want to see that one? All right, he's got it for me. I get done. Thank you, sir. All right. After I get done. Now I want you to read here. Mike's up. Look at uh, which. All right, John. I'm gonna start with John 10, in spite of what you said. All right, John chapter 10. Turn your Bibles there. Put it up closer. Down. Have you got it? John chapter 10. Look at verse, let's start with verse, uh, no, let's look, let's start at verse 40. Huh? Oh, Matthew, did you want to get in? I mean, Matthew. All right. John chapter 10, then we're going right back to John chapter 8, so hold on just a minute. If you just be quiet for a second, John chapter 10. Have you got it? Yes, sir, I got it. All right. Now, in John chapter 10, I want you to see several verses, beginning in verse 27. Here's what he says, and this is why some of y'all can't understand it. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father who gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Then he says in verse 30, now listen to this. He says in verse 30, I and my father are one. Hold it. Hold on. Hold on. I and my father are one. Now you want to say something on that, Doc? Yes, sir, I do. Go ahead. Make your statement. Then I'm going to come back. He's, I want him to say whatever his cocked hammer principle is, and let's see if it has any impact. As we turn, brothers and sisters, to the same book, John, John 5 and 30, Jesus says, I can of myself do nothing. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. If we go to Mark 13 and 32. No, 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 no. no, no. You're supposed to comment on that verse or let's the same thing, same thing. Jesus says, of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels who are in heaven, neither the Son, but only the Father. Okay, fine. Now, well, let me tell you something about that. Let me give you one more. Let yeah. me give you one more. No, 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 I'm answering the question. Mark, let, let me tell you this about they call Jesus, Jesus, they call Jesus good master. Jesus said, none is good but the Father. Not me and the Father, just the Father. All right. Come on, Pastor. Now, stop. Let me answer that. Come on, Pastor. Let me start with the last one. Come on, Chuck. I'm coming, Doc. Come I'm on, coming. Chuck. I'm coming. I'm coming. You know what? It would be nice if you could win this debate without help. Uh -huh. I'm dependent on yeah. the God and His grace. I need now, help. Now, let me say something to you. Let me say something to you. The fact is, the reason why y'all so loud is because you know he's getting his butt hit, and you want to make a lot of noise to cover it up. You hold on, and I'll deal with it. All right, go ahead now. Now let me say this to you. When G, the verse he quoted, and again, always out of context, he said, none good but the Father. Why? To prove a point. He said, why are you calling me good 
In other words, you must acknowledge. Read the next two verses after that last one you read. I read it. No, you read it, son. You read it. No, you don't have a Bible, do you? I read what I was. You don't want to read it from the Bible. You read it. The problem is, see? You read it. You don't have a Bible. You read it. All right, fine. I'll go back to it. Now, I just dealt with John chapter 10, and I showed you what he said. Now, listen to what happens right behind that. In John chapter 10, when he said, I and my father are one, because most Bible bashers, like uh, Dr. Muhammad, do not believe that Jesus said he was God. But listen to what the Jews who were right there when he said it said. Hold up high. Listen to what they said. He said, I and my father are one. The Bible then says, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works have I shown you from my father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him saying, listen, for a good work we stone thee not but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, maketh thyself God. Read it for yourself. Now you look at the next one, in John chapter 8. Look at John chapter 8. I'm telling you, wait a minute. I'm telling you that they understood what he was saying. He said he was God. They understood he what he was saying. Say he was God. God. Is this an argument or a debate, Doc? It's both. Okay. Can I, can I Brother. Well, you're losing the debate. You might win the argument. Brother, brother, brother. Uh, John chapter 8. I'm going to give you another one. You asked for two. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to give you John chapter 8. I'll give you John chapter 8, then you can come back. All right? Now listen to this. In John chapter 8, notice this conflict that's going on and what Jesus said. He said, He said in verse 53, let's go back to verse 51. Barely, barely, I'm answering the question. Here's what Jesus says he's God. Listen to this. Listen to what he says. Let's have it quiet, please. John 8, John 8, and verse 51. Barely, barely, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a demon. Abraham is dead in the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus said, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see, to, rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Now understand something, buddy, woman, Thank listen you. to this. That word I am is just the root, root, same Hebrew root, Greek root. You'll find in the book of Genesis, Adonai, I am. When Moses asked God, who shall I say send me? What did he say? I am sent me. He said, what's your last name? He said, Moses, tell him I am that I am. And here's Jesus saying the same thing. I'm not done yet. Here's another one. Look in the book of Revelation. Don't start me talking. I'll tell everything I know, bro. Look at the book of Revelation. Let's be respectful. In the book of Revelation. And let's also respect time. All right, listen to this. And, uh, I beg your pardon, am I going over time? I just want to touch on it myself. You want to touch it on yourself? Well, it was my question, so I'm going to answer the questions you answer, too. Answer, then. I'll come back after you. Brothers and sisters, he quoted from John, and he used the Jew. Jesus didn't say, I am God. He's doing in the question and answer period the same thing he did in the debate. She asked him where Jesus said, I am God. He could not find that, so he quoted the Jews. And he went to John. Let's go to the same group of John. And let's go to the same group of Jews. John, the eighth chapter, Jesus is talking to them, same group of Jews, in the 31st verse. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him. He went on to tell them that his word had no place in them. He went on to tell them, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. So if the Jew said it, Jesus said that it ain't no truth in the Jew. So we can't accept the Jew as a witness here tonight. In that case, my brother, I don't know why you keep quoting scripture all the time, because the Jew, most of the scriptures are written by Jew. But let me show you something else. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, these are the words of Jesus. 
Last, last point. Revelation 1, verse 8. Revelation 1, verse 8. Jesus speaking. Revelation Jesus speaking. He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, who is and who was, who is to come, the Almighty. Did you realize what he said? He said, I am Alpha and Omega, saith the Lord. Jesus was quoting the Lord. Well, you, you know what? What he's demonstrating to you, Jesus, what, what he's demonstrating to you is our ignorance of Greek. If he understood the Greek language, he would read it and see that's not the declension of it. What and he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said Greek to me, Jesus said he's the Almighty. If, listen, let me tell you something, folks. If you believe this man, if he's wrong, if I'm wrong, and he's right, let me tell you what it's done for me. I think my life has been changed. I have lived a life of happiness. I know how to treat my wife from the Bible. I know how to raise my sons. If I'm wrong, then I will die in peace thinking that I did everything right. But if this man is wrong, he's on his way to hell, and you're going with him. Question. We're going to get to the next question. I just want to have one point in there. Question. Jesus says, Eli, Eli, lama sabatimu. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? My is the possessive pronoun. Jesus said, my God, my God. Jesus had a God. And when Jesus went into the Garden of Gethsemane, he fell down on his face, the way the Muslims pray, down on his face. <laughs> Jesus had to pray to a God greater than himself. L let's go back. I don't know. I'll tell go you back to the question, period, please. Question. Right, let's go back to the question. I do have a question. We started to uh, my left. Jesus is, is the, right. according to the scriptures in Romans, he is from the, in the flesh, he is from David, but he has been declared to be the son of God according to hold, the spirit of holiness. Reverend Chuck Singleton. Okay, we go to this side for the question. Let's keep the question short. Reverend Singleton, giving all honor to God. I know it. I know the mic keeps going off. Giving all honor to God, I bring you greetings from Pastor Cecil L. Chip Murray at First African Methodist Episcopal Church. <laughs> Pastor Murray is a little concerned Pastor Murray is a little concerned. He said over 700 young black men and women died in 1991. We have over 100,000 young men who have decided to call themselves gangbangers. He doesn't seem to understand why a Christian man has a need to cast dispersions, negative thoughts, and doubts on the nation of Islam that's trying to make a difference in this community. My you go back you. and tell him he's confused. I didn't invite you here. They invited me here. I was invited here, sir. So you tell him he's confused. You were invited here because you continue to attack me. I attacked because you attacked me. Yes. In your book. Elijah Muhammad's book attacks Christian ministers. It attacks the Christian religion. It says Jesus didn't rise from the dead. You want me to sit still? My no. question. My statement. You get the, drink hey, uh, right? the gentleman's finishing his question. Brother, please finish your question. My statement is or statement. that Pastor is this a statement time or question time? That Pastor Cecil L. Chip Murray is in full support of the Nation of Islam and Minister Louis Farrakhan. Thank you, sir. But my question is to you: Why do you use the Bible as a weapon of attack against black people, as the Bible has been used? with the son of Noah to enslave let me, let me and serve no, wait, 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 back wait, wait, people and no, no, serve the no. That is my question. I'll tell you what, brother. Brother, that was a statement, not a question. And let me say this question to you. you. You don't want to hear That's brother. fine. I will answer this I'm in this way. Too. I'll answer it this way. Number one, what you all have tried to do and what Minister Muhammad has tried to do 
is to build your straw man so you can knock it down. I want you to understand something. I have not used the Bible to attack Louis Farrakhan. I have not used it to attack Minister Muhammad. I will say this. I believe the Bible. I believe every inch is God breathed. I believe that God spoke to us through the Bible. Therefore, I believe that God, though Christianity has its roots in Africa, and I somewhat laughingly brought these pictures up, because I don't believe y'all worship any picture of black, white, red, yellow, or any other color of Jesus. Because it's an idol, and God is not an idol. We worship him in spirit and in truth. However, I believe that because Jesus had African roots, and when you check the lineage of Jesus, you will find out that he had African in him as much as anything else, more than European. Therefore, therefore, let me tell you this. I wish you'd shut up so I can get to yours. You're about 95th in the line. The fact is that, that I have no attack against anybody. I simply preach the word of God as it is written, and I will always preach it as it is written. And any time there are white folks from our church that are here right now, if you don't like it, that's your problem. That's all right with me. I'm going to tell you, you can call me whatever you want to call me. I believe I'm going to heaven. I'm on my way there. There's going to be white folks there. There's going to be some round folks there. There's going to be some yellow folks there. There's going to be some red folks there. And you ain't going to be there. And from what you say, you don't want to be there. We need the next question, please. Yes. Pastor Singleton is batting a thousand. He never answers the question. Let's be quiet. Let's get some questions answered and let's maintain control, please. Good evening, and I would like to address both Speak ministers. Speak up, please. Good evening, and I would like to address both ministers in regards to our economic condition as black people. We don't need to talk about how spiritual we are. We need to talk about our economics. What are we going to do to uplift ourselves economically and That's come good. out of this oppression? You go. the question directed to? Let me. Both ministers. Both ministers, she said. You want to try it? No, sir. I, I won't try. I'll answer. Sir. Right. Sisters, could you direct your question to one of the ministers? Oh, Brother Collin, take okay, No, I wanted both oh, ministers to comment on it because oh, it's a black issue, not a spiritual issue. It's our economic. Okay, I'll go with. Uh, In the scriptures of the Bible, we are taught about the good shepherd that the good shepherd would lay down his life for the sheep. That the good shepherd is not just a hireling. Is that a King James Bible? The good Bible? shepherd yeah. will not just come in and pretend in front of the, a black audience to make them think that he's black and that he's on the right track. But the good shepherd stands for the sheep. And when the wolves come, the good shepherd defends them. I say that to say, and go on to the next scripture, Peter was asked the question, lovest thou me? And Peter gave the answer, yes, Lord. He said, then feed my sheep, feed my lamb. He asked him this question three times. Not only feeding the word, but also feeding the people, making sure that the people's needs are met. Food, clothing, and shelter making sure that the whole man and the whole woman is addressed. A holistic approach to religion and to God's word. We have set up thousands of acres of farmland, dairies, canneries, shopping center complexes, our own trucks and trains and boats and planes, cargo planes, passenger planes, ships sailing to Lima, Peru, South America, ships sailing to Japan and to Northern Africa, over 46 schools and universities of Islam. We have set a track record over the years in the 60s, 70s, and on up, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan following in those footsteps of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we feed the flock, and it is not a doctrine that is a doctrine of deficiency, but we are actually turning water into wine. Thank, Thank you, Asalaamu Alaikum. My answer, 
Me, please, miss, let me give you my part of that answer. The Nation of Islam has done some good works, and nobody's denying that. I've never denied that. I don't want you to go away with the impression that I said that. I didn't say that. I've never said that. My tapes don't say that. However, just like there are many good works you've done, please don't forget that there are Baptist hospitals, Methodist hospitals, Texas Christian University, Bishop College, Wilberforce University, which are all Christian schools, and you can't take those from us. Those are black Christian schools. Wilberforce is a black school begun to train Methodists, and those other schools that I name are black schools. They've begun by the church, so don't forget that. While you claim things that you never touched, Minister Mohammed, I must tell you that Christians have done their works as well. Our church itself has a $4 million senior citizen housing project in Fontana, where we have senior citizens that stay there with low incomes. We have a thing called Operation Blessing, where we feed people that stand in lines longer than these two lines to eat at least once or twice a week. We have, in addition to that, sheltered park residents for people. We have clothing that stretches in a park about a fourth the size of this auditorium. That's for people that are without clothes. We have furniture as well that's being given to the poor. That's in a local church. Give that's not some a general situation. Give the pastor a black hand. And we'll take the next question, please. My question is um, to both to both for the ministers. You have to direct it at one first, because we'll, we'll stand up here and okay. say, no, you take it. Dr. You take Khalib, it. you first, and then Pastor Chuck. Uh, thank you. Um, my question is of a theological nature. As I study the first five books of the Bible, which I know that you treasure, I see that in order to have a relationship with God, there has to be atonement for your sins. In other words, there is some blood that is shed that covers you for your, for, from your sins to have a relationship with God, Allah, whatever you want to call him, how do you justify your relationship with God without having atonement for your sins? My brother, there must be atonement for sin. But what I eat won't make you fat, and when I die, they're not going to bury you. Nobody can die in my place. If Jesus died 2,000 years ago for the sins of the world, why is, is there more sin now than it was 2,000 years ago? No, my brother. We must make an atonement for our own sin. And blood is not just talking about the physical blood that courses its way through the veins and bathes the brains. Blood is talking about life. You must share the old life, the blood of the old life, and take on the new man, the new woman, and the new personality. That is a root cause of atonement. But you can't give the credit to someone who died 2,000 years ago and think we can sin today because he paid the price 2,000 years ago. No, sir. No, sir. My turn. The fact is that central to the Bible and central to even primitive religions around the world is the idea of atonement. Everybody agrees that there must be some price paid for sin. That's right. The problem is that God is a just God, and we know we have been the victims of the sin of man. Man is sinning. God is just. Now, the problem is that when God sees man in his sin, God would not come down to man because he's holy and pure. On the other hand, man couldn't come to God because he was in sin. He tried religions and he tried good works, he tried philosophy. But what we wound up with is this, God wouldn't, man couldn't. We needed somebody who was both God and man at the same time, and that's what Jesus Christ was all about. He came to shed the blood, his blood and to pay the price, the penalty for your sins. And I know this, I don't care if 100,000 people here don't agree, there's somebody that's hearing this message tonight, and I want you to know that Jesus Jesus paid the price on the cross for your sins. You may not find out what that's about here tonight. You come and see me or see one of these other believers, these Christians here, and they'll tell you how to be saved. It takes the blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There must be blood. When Adam and Eve sinned, God took an animal and shed his blood. When Noah got off the ark, he got off. The first thing he did was kill an animal and sacrifice 
blood. All of that was foreshadowing, pointing towards the Lord Jesus Christ who shed his blood on the cross 2,000 years ago. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 that this man, even though the Jews had come and brought the blood into the place and a sacrifice for years and years, that Jesus shed his blood once and for all and sat down at the right hand of God the Father. So right now, if you want to know God, it's through the blood, brother. You, you ain't going to get it that way. Let me tell you something. This man has got it up here, but he don't have it down here. He's going to miss heaven by 18 inches, and you're going to miss it too if you go along with him. Sister, right over there. Next question. Yes. <clears throat> yes, Pastor. May we have it quiet, please. Let's be cordial and respectful to one another, please. Pastor Singleton, two, two very brief questions. First of all, if Jesus... Sister, can only be one question. Just one. One question, please. Okay, then I'll go back to my original question. Pastor Singleton, please tell me, you said the Bible had its origin in Africa. You said the Bible had its origin in Africa. What happens to the mind of black people and the mind of white people as they sit in churches? with the image of divine in a Caucasian flesh for 400 years. And you tell me the Bible originated in Africa and it had its origin there. Then why are all the pictures portrayed in the Bible in a Caucasian flesh? What does this do to the mind of the black man and the black woman and the black child as they see this image of the vine for I got your 400 question. years? I got your question. Which one feels inferior That's a good and which one feels superior? <laughs> Let me ask you. Now, first of all, that's a very good question. I appreciate that. And I want to tell you, sister, that that's probably the most honest question I've heard, at least in the discussion so far. Let me answer it for you. First of all, I didn't say the Bible was written in Africa. I said Christianity has its roots in Africa, deeply embedded in Africa. Uh, secondly, that is probably one of the most hideous things about American or Western Christianity. The reason for it, the reason why it was done, the reason why the white Jesuses and the white pictures, and you will not find them anywhere at Loveland, you will not find them in our building on Sierra and Baseline, you won't find them in our old building on Bay Mango and Fontana, you will not find pictures of any Jesus. He wants to tell you that we're worshiping this blonde haired blue-eyed sissy with red blonde hair and manicured fingernails. Brother, that is not what Jesus is all about. He's a man's man with dirt underneath his fingernail, with hair on his chest. He was a man, he was fully man, yet fully God. That's not who we worship. I don't believe in that. There's no way you can look back through the genealogy of Jesus and see three Africans. You know how we do. You can't see three Africans in the genealogy of Jesus and then come up with a blonde-haired, blue-eyed white man. It just will not work. I don't believe that. But the reason for it is so that your truth, that the, your roots, that the whole history of Christianity in Africa, the whole idea of you knowing Jesus could be obscured. That's the reason why. Because the reason why you turned was because of this blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus. You didn't meet the real one. You didn't meet the real, the real Jesus. You thought it was this funny-looking sissy somewhere. It wasn't the real Jesus. That's the point I'm making tonight. Look for the real Jesus, not that sissy somewhere. It seems like Pastor Singleton is preaching to the choir. We already know that, and we were the ones who were teaching that long before anyone else here in the hills of North America. But now every one of you, sir, then you need to know in those hospitals, in those hospitals that Pastor Singleton spoke of, they got a white Jesus hanging up in that hospital. That's not true. Oh, no. He mentioned oh, no. in the white oh, no. hospital. Oh, no. You go to Baptist Hospital in the United States, you will not see a white Jesus or a white The Muslim. majority of the white, the majority of the religious hospitals from Christianity in the high 98 to 99 percentile have a white image of a Jesus or right. an angel. You know what I'm saying? But if you know or not, not, but if you got sense enough to know he's not white, why do you reject him? Why don't you, you know, know he's not white? Why are Christian brothers and sisters? Your white Christian Christian brothers and sisters. I do that. You I'm preaching some of them now. Yeah, there's some white images here. We I, do I do not believe, I do not believe Jesus was a white, blonde haired European. Let there's nowhere in the Bible that indicates I, I that. And you nowhere know. in history. Let's go. Go ahead, tell him. You'll see the shrine, 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 shrine of the black Madonna. You'll see the shrine that tells you that even Mary you know that. was thought to be white. White, black, and white people are the ones that are Let's go back to the question and answer.
into a session. We're going to start over to the, my right, which would be your left at this time. And it was just one point I had. I yes, didn't get sir. to say it. He cut me off. All right. He cut me off. Finishing point, and we'll and go to the right. Of, and speaking of the image of Jesus and Pastor Singleton mentioning the genealogy, Ma another contradiction, Matthew 1, 6 through 16, and Luke 3, 23 to 31, gives you two different genealogies of Jesus. I told you, Matthew 1, 6 through 16, Luke 3, 23 through... Can I have my mic back on again? All right, read the genealogies and tell me what the contradiction is. No, you said it's contradictory. I already told them where to find it. Okay. Well, Let's fine, we'll show me the contradiction. At this point, we're going back to the questions. We're going to go to this side here. Let's be concise and specific on the questioning, and let's try to do that also with the answer. My question is for uh, Chuck, Pastor Chuck Singleton. My father is an elder, deacon in your church. In 1985, I visited your church. And as Dr. Khaled Muhammad said, it seems as though you're pretending up here today because when I was there, I didn't see anything that said that you were black as you pretend to be today. He didn't, he did not hear, he did not hear. In 1985, I attended your church a couple of times. I was in San Bernardino at, the, at that time. And like I said, my father, Stanley Reed, is a deacon in your church. You said that already. And that I did not, yeah, I, I wanted to repeat it. All right, okay. I, when I was there in 85, I did not see any of what you have produced today. What, for example? The things, the, black, the blackness that you are attempting to talk to. Brother, when I stand up, you got all the blackness you need. I, I, I'm as I, black as you can get. I'm not talking about the color of your skin. I don't know what you're talking about, then. I don't know whose son you are. I love your I'm mind. not your dad, Stan Reed, but I don't know whose son you are. Your mind. The fact is, brother, I am a black man. When I stand up, I talk black. When I sit, I look black. When I preach, I preach black. When I did I not was, hear it. I was educated black. I didn't I, hear it. You look at me right now. I did not hear it. Fellas? I didn't hear it. Okay, let's finish the question. Let me, let, let me ask you a question, then. Let's let finish me ask the you question. a question. Yeah. Was I out? I'm sorry? Was I out? Can we finish the question? Hold on, let's finish the let question. to the question. And then we're going over to the left. My left, your right. Brothers and sisters, black, Dr. Maulana Karenga teaches us that black is color, culture, consciousness, and I have added with his permission and a corresponding cosmic connection. How we hook up with the God. So to say when I stand up I am black, I might be an area, I might be Brother, black when, you, when your name is white on the inside. When you go all the way over to Arabia, well, I'm not saying you either. Well, I'm not saying you But when a man goes all the way over to Arabia to get a name, when he passes up Changamari, Thumbutu, all the black names in Africa, how can you talk about black when you took an Arab's name? I told you, you, that, black I name, told right? you that Arabia is in Northeast Africa. Jerusalem is in Northeast Africa. Mecca is in Northeast Africa. And the sea is in Saudi Arabia. Arabia. But you're still coming from white Eurocentric history. Oh, no, 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 no. That's Chancellor Williams, brother. That's black history. Okay, we're going over to my left, which would be your right. Rebel Singleton. Would you speak up, please? Okay. Please speak your question. And one of the statements here, it says in the Quran... Speak into the microphone, please. And one of the statements here in Surah... May we have it quiet in the audience. Go right ahead, sister. I'm addressing this to the men and the women, mainly the women. In the Quran, in the Surah 434, the statement says that, uh, what Singleton has here, he says, you may beat your wife. In the Quran it says, slightly beat them. Now, if you get an English, Arabic... Slightly person, beat them, oh, okay. Listen, please. But all right, women, just may slightly. May she finish the question, Pastor Just Chuck. slightly. May she finish the question, please. If you get an English Arabic dictionary, you will find in the Arabic word 
that slightly does not mean. It means either or. It goes both for the male and the female, and it does not mean beat no one. It means you can beat a person with words, you can beat them with kindness, you can beat them with genuine love, you can beat them in all kinds of ways. It does not mean beat them. Let me explain something to you. Don't tell me about Arabic. I know know about Arabic. Let me me explain something to you. First of all... Can your question, Pastor Chuck? Sister, will you ask the concise question, please? Ask the question, please. Okay, I would like to know why you put the statement in this pamphlet to insult the Quran, the Muslims of the world. Is that not what the Quran says? No. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you read it in English, all I did was print it just like it reads in English. If If it needs interpretation, you just did it. That's fine. I just put it just like it reads. If you say the Bible was written in Hebrew, or it was in Hebrew, and then translated in English, wouldn't you have to go to Hebrew to understand what I did not comment on it. I read it. Point is well taken. And if the Quran was written in English, and the Arabic tongue of Arabic, wouldn't you have to go to the Arabic to understand? First of all, you need to remember that the Quran is not even supposed to be translated out of Arabic. Excuse me, may I say this? You're supposed to learn Arabic. My sister, my sister, my sister, my sister. His point is well taken. Mm. If it is there and it reads that way, then he only quoted it in the pamphlet that he sent out the way it was written there. But what we must understand is that we follow the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And I started this debate saying both the Bible and the Quran in their original what state, about the so they the black both man? need interpretation today. What about the message and to the black man? to the black man says nowhere to put your hands on the black woman. No, he will not. put you out of the nation of Islam. That's right. Put your hands yes, on the black yes. woman. But then it says that the United States of America was going to fall in 1966 66 what about that? Has it fallen yet? Do you understand it? No, I know I don't. Help me. I can't help you at this point. I'll help you after the... De- no, no, I want to know why America didn't fall in 67. It's not for us to ask questions. It's for them. Yeah. We're talking you about the break. break. I'll answer it for you. you. Answer We're talking about the breaking of America's power. And a change of major significance took place in 1914. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. In 1967... Black folks were starting to get some rights. We were starting to get a few. We never After, the 19, under the after 1967, Ronald Reagan came into power. We didn't go up. We went down. What happened to Elijah Muhammad's prophecy? In the book of Isaiah, if the prophet is wrong, he's to be stoned to death. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is right and exact, brothers and sisters. We never got many rights under the white man. And where is America? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did a the before him. The because ball? he's been a straight up cracker with us. The others fooled us and made us think we had a period of economic and political prosperity. But let's get to the questions here. Okay, we go on one more question on each side. I'm sorry for the sake of time. Sir. Make it two more. Okay. Four more. Will you agree with that? Four more. Pastor Chuck, three, four more. How many more? How many? Wait, 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 wait. Let him hear, at least listen to him. At least listen to him. You're right. He's right. Three or four, at least. Did the white Three. Okay. I'm sorry for those who are standing way back in the line. We're only going to have to honor at least three more questions on each side. And... Ask a concise and a specific question, please. One question per speaker. And give both an opportunity to ask. Minister Stanley Muhammad. Go ahead. But Minister Stanley you go X. With that. I got this. You go on with what you do. Go on and continue. Yes, sir. I'll take you to the left. Or did I go? No, this brother to the right. I'm sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Um, i just like to put greetings to Dr. Collins and also to Pastor Chuck. My name is Makungu Akinyela and I'm the National Vice Coordinator of the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement and the New African People's Organization. I also am a Christian minister with the African Methodist Episcopal Church. The question I have is, Malcolm said that when these racists that have been oppressing our people for so long hoop us upside our heads, when they put us in jail, they don't do it because we're Muslims. And they don't do it because we're Baptists or because we're Catholics. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
My best comrade in the New African People's Organization happens to be a Muslim. But we understand that we all have a common struggle for liberation and independence. I need, I need for these brothers, you know, it's, it's been kind of like uh, American gladiators tonight. And I would hope that we can reconcile and see what is our basis for unity. Malcolm said our basis for unity was the struggle against uh, human rights violations and the oppression of our people as a nation. What do you two see as our basis for unity, even with all this struggle over two books that, you know, I live for Christ in my heart, not in some paper, uh, words on paper. You see, and I would hope that a Muslim is for Allah in his heart. Dr. Akinyawa, I will attempt to answer that first. I would say the basis for unity, number one, is our common struggle. I think you already put it that way. The things we're dealing with, oppression, problems, poverty, and the economic things that a sister brought up a minute ago are the basis for our unity. But I want to make it plain, as I stand here before in your place where you invited me to come, and I brought some people from Lublin with me, but I want you to understand something. I want you to understand that when I read a religious book that's influencing a number of black young people and it tells them that their pastor and other ministers are influenced by the devil and that their preaching is of the devil, I get very concerned. So I'm very concerned. That's the reason for this debate. It does not mean we can't do some other things. This debate is, is just what it is. It's about that subject. Doesn't mean we can't do some things. It means we're debating about that subject. All right? I would have to agree with Pastor Chuck Singleton 100% for the first time tonight. I would have to agree with him and say that we must unite on the basis of our common struggle. In elementary and secondary school, we learn that when you want to bring fractions together, that you must reduce the fraction to its lowest term and then find the least common denominator. You bring factions together, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teach us, the same way you bring fractions together. We as a people have been reduced to our lowest term. Now we have to find the least common denominator of our unity that will pull us and bind us and bond us to each other. Flesh to flesh, blood to blood, bone to bone, spirit and soul to spirit and soul. And I must go even further to say that I believe with all of my heart in Jesus, but I believe that Jesus the Christ is a black man. Now, Pastor Singleton has said from the picture, I believe, that you believe he's black also. Is that correct? No, I didn't say that. Well, what did you bring the picture up here for? What I said is this. First, let me let you understand something. Just take me one second, to, one minute to explain it. Now, Muslims, Muslim means Jesus peace. Jesus is black is my question. No, I'm not going to answer it like that. Let me explain it to you this way. I believe that just like there are many people in this room who are black, who are Indian, there are many people in this room who are black, who are Caucasian, both. And there are people in this who have Caucasian blood. There are people in this room who are of mixed race. Now, when it comes to Jesus, I believe that there were Africans in his lineage. But you need to understand that just like the question was raised a minute ago about blood, Jesus had no blood from any man. He was virgin born. Therefore, he could not have any man's blood. However, you need to understand also that Jesus was born in brown Asia. When he got ready to hide, they took him to black Africa. So how y'all going to make him white? Okay. According to the scripture, Romans, the first chapter, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, to become, be an, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised to for his prophets in the Holy Scripture. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, it says. The pastor just said, no flesh. No, that's seed. I didn't say seed. I said, the seed of David, according to the what? 
according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. Isaiah chapter 7 says that God is going to give you a sign. A virgin is going to conceive and bear a son. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, Under us a child is born, under us a son is given, okay. and his name shall be called Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, Son of God. He go was a virgin born at this man. Time. But Sorry. the virgin that he was born from, are you falling in line with the white, racist, sexist Christians? The virgin black mother had flesh. Are you going to deny that? I don't deny his flesh. What I deny is that he had the blood you of a man. You said no flesh connection. I said no blood. Okay, gentlemen, look at her. You are right. Did Mary have blood? Did the black woman Mary have blood? Did the black woman Mary have blood? Well, what is he talking about? Well, let me explain. See, doctor, with all the Harvard and stuff, question he does not know that. that the blood of a woman does not enter the embryo of a child. That man doesn't know that. He's got a doctor. How come he don't know that? The blood of a woman doesn't go into an embryo. It's the blood comes from the father. Check it out. Scientifically. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. That's not all together true. That's the same thing we've been doing here all night. Right question. You mean we're going to erase this woman totally? We understand that when the sperm is mixed with ovum, in the sperm and the ovum is blood. Okay. No, 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 no. no. We, we can go out with a question and that. But this Pastor man doesn't know please. when that sperm goes into an egg, let the sperm be respectful. Do respect. Okay, we're going over to our right okay. with another question. Two more questions over there. Two more questions over there. Okay, uh, Dr. Khalid Muhammad produced several verses from the Bible. Let's have it quiet, please. Be specific on the question, sir. Okay. Uh, Dr. Khalid Muhammad produced several verses from the Bible to show that it was infected with contradictions. Therefore, the Bible is obviously tampered with, which uh, Chuck Singleton, throughout his 40-minute lecture and all his rebuttals, failed to resolve or reconcile any of the contradictions. But I would like, we all know that Christianity has been used as a tool to enslave the black man. But on top of that, the Bible which you give oath to, Chuck, supports slavery. The text of the Bible, if you open it up to Ephesians yeah, chapter 6. Question. Hold on, question, hold on, sir. Hold on. If you open up your Bibles, are you hot gospelers, Bible thumpers, Christian evangelists, no. Christian missionaries, open up your book to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5. Paul, the self-appointed apostle, said, Servants, some Bibles translated as slaves. Be obedient to your earthly slave masters as you will do unto God. Hold that. on, hold on, hold on. Ask the question, on. sir. Okay, the question is, okay, right. hold on. As well as, as you are supposed to be as devoted to Christ, you're supposed to be devoted to your earthly slave master, but with fear and trembling in your heart. That's advocating human suffering, human slavery, and because since Paul did that, he contradicted Jesus. Ask the question, I, sir. I, I, I'm going to point out the contradiction, sir. No, we, sir, you must ask the question. Okay. Be specific on the question. Okay, uh, resolve, resolve, resolve the slave thing that is in the text of the Bible and resolve this contradiction in Matthew chapter 2, verse 28. Jesus made it very clear that we are not supposed to... Fear ask the, the question, sir. Okay, read, read. Okay, okay, here, here, here. All right, okay, I will. here's the question. We are here at this point. Here's the question. Here's the question. Listen, here's the question. Chucky, baby, I want you to resolve the slate. You got to ask the question. Let's be specific on the questioning, please. He can't answer okay. it, brother. He's going to duck it. Okay, he wants me to explain Ephesians 6, verse 1. He's yes. going to duck it. He's glad you, to You did the best explanation when you started off. You were at servants. You need to understand something, that in Rome, at the time that was written, there were 900,000 people. 600,000 of them were considered slaves. Slavery was no more than employment at that time. That's why the text properly constructed out of the Greek would read servant. I'm not saying to you that the Bible altogether bans slavery, but it does say, the Quran does not, if you can get yourself free, then get free. 
You can mention it. I think, I think another, right. point, another point you ought to remember is this. Muhammad had slaves. Jesus didn't. Jesus went to Africa, and Muhammad never set his foot in Africa. We all are to our right, at the, my right, your left at this time. And our Islam, One Christianity, and Judaism existed before Muhammad. Bilal, the black African slave, never needed Muhammad to teach him anything. In fact, he taught all of them how to pray. Did Muhammad teach him how to marry a black wife? Muhammad took a woman who was his slave and married her, made her his fourth wife. That's okay, good. Woman. He liberated her and brought her into his home. Oh, yeah, question over here. Specific question. Let's go. Sir, your question, sir. Uh, my name is Wazir Salam. I have a question for Pastor Singleton. Earlier in your debate, uh, you mentioned that you had a Bible. I have a question. Is it true that the Bible that you had that was not the King James has 22 extra books which are not included in the King James Version? However, I see that most of your people here have a King James Version, and yet all your questions are answered from the King James Version. Can you answer any of the questions from the Bible that you had earlier to all the answers? And why is it that the King James Version does not have the 22 extra books that you had earlier in the Bible that you said you did believe in? Ooh. I don't, wait, 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 wait. Come back, sir. Sir? What, what is your question? He asked I don't understand it. what you're saying. He asked it already. No, sir, come back. Let you me hear him tell you. I'm confused. I want you to hear him tell Are you asking me... Are you asking me what, why, why there are 22 books that are not in the Bible, King James Bible? Is that what you're asking me? Is that your question? Let me have it quiet, please. Earlier, you picked up a Bible yes. that was not a King James Version. Is that yes. correct? That's right. In that Bible that you picked up, you said that you believe in those scriptures. Is that correct? That's correct. Is it a fact in the Bible that you picked up there are 22 extra books which are not printed in the King James Version, which most of your people and most of your answers come from? And I would like to know why it isn't it not in the King James Version. The I don't know, Bible. what 22 books you, I, in How my many Bible? books are in the Bible that you picked up earlier today? In my Bible, there's yes, 66. Sir. The, the no, the, the other Bible that you said you professed in. Oh, do you know that there's 22 extra ones? Can, tell me about it. What? I don't know anything about 22. Let me answer you, all right? Let me answer That's this way. Right, we, okay. we want dialogue. That's the we job. want dialogue. No, no. We want dialogue. Let me answer. Check me Let me duck. answer you this way. I'll Check answer you this way. Duck. Let me answer you this Maybe way. Let me quiet. Let me answer you this way. There are 66 books in the Bible. The Bible has 39 books in the Old Testament. It has 27 in the New. It was not, as uh, Dr. Muhammad said a minute ago, by the way, it was not a council at Carthage. It was a council at Nicene. It was a Nicene conference. Now, let me tell you what he did wrong with. That's exactly uh, what I said. Now, let me tell you about it. That conference took place in 325 AD. But let me share this with you. Polycarp. Polycarp was, you asked me a question, and I have a right to answer the way I want to. I'll be brief. Polycarp wrote, yeah, you, you know what, let me tell y'all something. I'm just letting you finish because it don't bother me. It really doesn't. I came here, I came here at your invitation, and you don't know how to treat a guest. L let him answer, please. I don't know how to treat a guest. All right. Now, Polycarp lived first during the times of John. He talked to Apostle John. He died at 80 years of age. It was in the 125th year that he died. Polycarp quotes from these scriptures. Acts, Romans 1 and 2, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Matthew, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, I could name others. The way the Bible was selected was not at some conference in Nicaea or in Carthage. The Bible was witnessed by the church throughout North and South Africa, whether Western Africa, and in Europe and in Asia. When the Bible was witnessed, these Christians for 200 years all had the same scriptures. When they came together for this conference that he spoke of, they just came to agree on what was already established. That conference was not about picking the verses, books of the Bible. That conference was about 
what Jesus was, what kind of God is he? That's what they argued about. That was 325 A.D. I have evidence right here that the Bible was already in use. The books as we know them were in use long before. Now, if that's not good enough, in addition to that, the Dead Sea Scrolls found at the Primran Caves were just come, just come out recently. Somebody finally got a hold of all of them. 1947, when the Quimran Caves were discovered, the Dead Sea Scrolls witnessed the Bible written just like we have it today. What Dr. Muhammad says to you is not true. The fact of the matter is there were 27 books accepted by the whole church. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God was given witness in the church no matter where the church was. They got together and they were all amazed that they were all reading the same books. That's what happened. That's, what, that's how we got the Bible. That's how we got the books of the New Testament. May I speak on that now, sir? I beg your pardon? It is, now, it is not known for certain who, in fact, wrote any of the books of the Old Testament. Not true. Let me finish, sir. I didn't cut you off. I listened patiently. You've been cutting For instance, it is now generally conceded that Moses was not the author of the first five books. In the first five books, he mentions his death, his funeral, and his burial. It goes on to say other books not in existence now are referred to in the Old Testament as of equal authority, such as the book of Jasser, the book of Nathan, the book of Hijah, the book of Edo, the book of Jehu, and sayings of the seers. Christians themselves are in disagreement as to what books are inspired. The Catholics claim has inspired the books of Maccabees, Tobit, Estrus, and etc. Have any of you read any of these books in your Bible? These are because books they are not that are out of the out. Bible. You know what determined the Bible in addition to the Holy Spirit? What determined the Bible was the apostles writing the book or someone they commissioned to write it. Mark was written by Mark at the instruction of Peter. Every other book is written by an apostle or someone that that apostle appointed. Those other books, the books of Barnabas and other books that are apocryphal books, were not, did not have an apostolic authority. Don't let this man hoodwink you. The fact is, the Bible has proved itself over the years. A man named Voltaire said in a hundred years, the Bible would be dead and the whole Christianity would be gone. He said that a hundred years ago, Voltaire is dead and the house that he set it in is now used to print Bibles. No matter how long this man talks about the Bible, the Bible is going to stand. When you're dead, when I'm dead, if the Lord delays his coming, the Bible will still be strong and people will still be getting saved through the Word of God. The Bible will not still stand. The Bible ends letting us know that it does not take us into the hereafter. The Lamb is leading the lost sheep up Mount Zion, and it says, No eye has seen, nor has any ear heard what the promised land would be about. So the Bible is a limited book that does not take us into the hereafter. It will not always stand. What an exception. I don't know what saying. Pass away. Jump. But my word will never jump, pass away, sir. say it the Lord. Uh, let's go with this questionnaire over there. Okay. Um, you don't agree with that? My question is directed to uh, Pastor Chuck Singleton. You don't agree? Uh, you stated, excuse me. You listening? How many more, sir? On these whatever. You say whatever. Hmm? As long as he's comfortable. You can talk. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you stated that uh, the Bible was not altered or tempered with, correct? I said what? You stated that the Bible was not altered or tempered with, correct? Not altered or tampered with. I say it's the word of God. Okay. No, 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 no. What is your question? That's right. Ask the question. What that's is your that's question? That's my answer, yes. Your answer is yes. Well, see, now, that would have to explain. Here's my explanation. Do you want to ask two questions or one? No, I'm, I just want to make He asked you, did let you let say that the Bible has not been altered or tampered with? What Bible? That a man can okay. write a Bible. Would you say the Koran has not been tampered with? Okay. Okay, yes, it has. Okay, you're saying, Ask the question. You're saying, you're I saying, started out telling you okay, the Quran. Okay, I said the original, the one, the, the original, you said the root of Christianity is in Africa, and let's say the Bible that was back, that the ones you were talking about okay, earlier. Okay, that one, yes, I okay. say it's never been tampered with. Okay, that's, that's the one with the Coptic Church, correct? No, not necessarily. Okay, the records of the Coptic Church. No, Nubian Church. Okay, Nubian Church. Yes. The records of the Nubian Church clearly has no evidence of Moses' birth, his story, but yet today we have a Bible that does have a, uh, uh, the history of Moses, his birth, Do you have a quote from the Nubian scriptures? I don't have the quote well, with me. Sit down but, no, 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 no
it is in so those, it's not in those uh, books. You, and brother, you know like Dr. Uh, Muhammad. You know that I'm stuck. You come out of nowhere with things. If you can quote it, or sit down. That's I don't have that. You have the scriptures with you? I'll, I'll show you. God, yes. I'll show you in, in, in the Indian scriptures where it states that. And I'm if you'd like to, we can get together after this debate and I'll show you. No, no, show me now. Get it for me and I'll show you. Get Do you, you have the Nubian scriptures? Okay, fine. Have you read the Nubian scriptures? Fine. Answer, have you read the Nubian scriptures? Next question. Did you know that Moses was not in it? Did you well, know I'll Moses tell you what, I'll try to answer you, brother. All right, I'll try to answer you. The fact of the matter is, we have to go to the next question. We have to go to the next question. We're going to the next question He asked me a question and he said I didn't answer it. Okay. I thought you answered it. Give me a minute. I thought you answered it. Give me a minute. I'm going to go sit down. All right, now here's the question. Let him answer it and then we'll go to the next question. All right, my answer to that is this. My answer to that is this. There are, and if I had my projector, which I asked for two weeks ago, I would show you. There are 24,000 manuscripts from the New Testament writings. No other book in all of antiquity can match it. The closest is Homer's Iliad, which has 634 manuscripts. The only other book in antiquity that even comes close, that's number two, 24,000 manuscripts that support the New Testament. Now, I'm saying to you that that Bible, in its original form, is without error. I believe that it is God's word God sent to man. Frankly speaking, if God is God, then how can anybody believe that he can't protect his own word? You got more respect for the devil white man than you have for God. You think that God can send his word and then some white man is going to change it and God can't do nothing about it. Poor God. Well, let's sin. take a look at that. If God can send his son into the world and his son get crucified, then what makes you think that a book couldn't be crucified? Because. <laughs> Next question. Why? Because God sent his son to work before the foundation of the world. No disrespect, the church. That's the difference between him and the 16 crucified saviors you talked about. He died on purpose. Next Nobody question. took his life. All he of his life. He shared his life. He shared his life. All of them. Next question to my right, your left. Brother from Loveland here. No, this is a brother from Maranatha Community Church. <coughs> All right. Pastor Billy G. Ingram. Excuse me. I like to make one statement. I'm a man of bottom line. Now, we're talking about Christianity as opposed to a Muslim, a Muslim, whatever you want to say. I have okay. said that we are for okay. all, that we are at the root okay. of all of them. Okay, my I didn't point, separate. All right, my point is this. If Chuck Singleton is correct in the Bible, and the Bible said that in the end, we will be with the Lord forever. Let me make my point. We will be with the Lord forever. If he's wrong, what do we lose? If he's right, what do we gain? If you're right, what do you gain? Just everybody in this room is going to die one day. What do you gain if you're right? If you're right. But I think your question just bears witness to what I well, said. Tell me. I said that all energy is constant. Okay. It just changes okay. form. Let me finish. Oh, so you I said all matter it. is neither created nor is it destroyed. So that means I believe that we all are eternal with God. Just what you okay. said. Okay. So if that's okay. what he said, he had no argument with okay. me. So this is New Age movement. This is New Age question. Right. One question no, only. No, I know this, this is on that same line. line. This is on that same line. Let him finish. This is the New Age movement, right? In other words, before I was a grasshopper, before I was a dog, before I was a, a horse, uh, over in India, they don't kill a cow because they believe a cow is a person of some sort. So is that what's coming in? See, I think the problem is that we have to look at the heart, not the outward expression. These people need to know the Lord. They need to know that there is a, a life beyond that. They don't need to know. Right now, the things we have right now doesn't, is going to pass away. It's going to burn up. It's going to be destroyed. We need to have our heart right and eternal life in Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. yes. None of us will I argue with this brother. I'm going to walk down here and say that. Okay. None of us will argue with brother that our hearts have to be made right. I'm not talking about coming through a grasshopper or a horse. The scripture says in that day you will see all of the old prophets and saints coming back. What it means is
is that you will see the divine mind and spirit return in somebody else. Next coming down the line of time. Next question. And the honorable Next Elijah question. Muhammad is the fulfillment the of that next. and Minister Farrakhan today. Next I and our last wanna... question will be to my left and your right. Uh, <clears throat> I would like I would like to address my question to both uh, Pastor Singleton and um, Dr. Muhammad. First of all, I would like to know if you believe, or if you know, I have a book on King James, uh, just about King James, and in that book, uh, it makes reference to the fact that he was a homosexual. Also, it makes reference that King James was indeed a master slave trader. And when you look in the Bible and you see uh, it question? was revised, does that mean changed, in your opinion? All right. We we don't revised. Have. Thank you, you for it. your question. Uh, first of all, in regard to King James, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I don't trust King James. My trust is in Jesus, and you need to know that, first of all. That's the second question, miss. That's the second question. So you just wait till I answer the first one. Now, there's two problems you ought to understand with the King James Bible. First problem is this. Language changes so that what may mean one thing back then doesn't mean the same thing now. For example, the word enthusiasm meant filled with God in the beginning. But now enthusiasm means exuberant. Words change. King James words change. Secondly, I would never tell you that a scribe, just like it happened with the Quran, and it could happen with any other book, I'd never tell you that a scribe could not make a mistake in his translation. I, so you I'm are saying that, that a scribe could have made a mistake with the Bible? I am saying that a scribe can leave it. Let me tell you, for example. Is it possible with let the me, Bible? Let me, let me answer your question. Is it possible with the Bible? No, I'm not going to answer your question. Uh, I'm going to answer her question. That's the subject. Now, here's my, here's my answer to that. Here's my answer to that. My answer to that is this. When the, uh, when the, when the Essenes not. wrote in 132 A.D. or B.C., before Christ, the book of Isaiah, it was hidden in the Qumran Caves. The book of Isaiah and the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in 1947. Now listen, we're talking 132 A.D. all the way to 1947, 2,000 years. When they pulled that out in 1947, that's past King James. The book of Isaiah had three errors. You know what they were? They didn't cross a T, they didn't dot an I, and one word that had no relationship at all to the total context of Scripture had three letters missing from one word. That's the kind of error I'm talking about, all right? Let me make this statement. That's putting a lot of faith and confidence in white folks. Last and all question. of a sudden, after all these thousands of years, they, babies and come up, they come up with some new... They come up with some new scrolls and tell you that we just found these guys and these scrolls are us so and white men so smart to him, but God is so dumb. God is a big dummy. He lets the white man do everything. The white man writes the Bible, the white man does, and God just sits in the all the I wish, I wish, I wish. He gave you your Dead Sea Scrolls. He did all of that, sir. It wasn't the white man, brother. It was Arabs that found the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Arabs that are called Arabs today are white men. They are not the true Arabs. The great debate. Give them a hand. Give them a stand. Two brothers, two brothers, Christian and Muslim, embrace after it's all over. That's what we should do after it's all over. Assalamu alaikum. I know I've torn you in the hands as these two powerful black ministers and pastors meet and greet one another. I turn you into the capable hands of Brother Minister Stanley X. Give him a hand. Brothers and sisters, please don't leave. Please stay and join us for a closing prayer. Brothers and sisters, Please remain and close out.
Tapes will be on sale tomorrow at Muhammad Mosque number 27, 4506 Western. And tomorrow also we will have a lecture delivered at 2 o'clock by our brother and minister, Khalid Abdul Muhammad.